We are live. So, welcome. Hey, hello everyone. And if you want to uh, just introduce yourself and stuff. Okay, so my name is Alex Negria. I'm a Romanian concept artist and illustrator. And I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, so, I, I currently live in Canada. I work for, for Volta Studios. I do concept art there for roughly three years. Before that, I was a freelancer working mostly with card games. I worked for Applebot. That was the, the high peak of my career, I, I think. <laughs> uh, a lot of people still hit me up about that old work, which I don't do anymore. <laughs> and uh, before that, uh, I, uh, I studied design in a college. So see, I'm, I'm going reverse. <laughs> um, I, I studied design in, co in a college in Romania. Um, I kind of did a bit of everything there. There was uh, product design, um, graphic design, interior design, and fashion design. We were kind of supposed to pick only one thing, but I, I talked to the teachers and uh, I started uh, going to all the courses slowly. Of course, I wasn't allowed to take the exams, but it was like a good experience um, for me. It kind of opened up my curiosity for things and uh, on my uh, in my free time i would use like almost every hour possible to to draw and improve it was back in the day when forums were, were still up and uh, i was eager to be a part of the art community uh, wait i'm, I'm receiving uh, skype uh, can i close my skype Sure. You think? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> because I'm receiving uh, messages <laughs> and they distract me. Okay. So yeah, like uh, I was saying that I kind of became part of the online art community super fast back in the conceptart.org and CG Hub days, and that's basically where I started. Like uh, that's how I I started drawing. I I was like super curious on how other people work. I was torrenting a lot of tutorials. <laughs> now I don't don't do that anymore. Um, but yeah, like th this is like the minimum, the the shortest story that I can tell uh, based on my life, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you want me to expand on something or? Um... Uh, when was how old were you when you started drawing picking up drawing uh it was uh, i think at 21 or 22. oh uh that late like, like yeah because like, like i was sketching in high school uh, or and uh till that point what the fuck? sorry i'm i keep on receiving messages i need to stop everything so uh i i uh da -da 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 -da. What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> oh, like when was the first time you started sketching and when did it become your decision to be an artist? Ah, my decision. Um, yeah, like I wasn't very good at informatics and uh, I went for one year of college at like uh, to study informatics and uh, it was really bad for me. And um, so I barely managed to, to pass the first year. And I was slowly starting to think, what else could I do uh, besides informatics that I could like pursue, like something that would interest me. So as a kid, I, I kind of liked uh, drawing classes that I had in school, but that that was it for me. I, I never drew before that, and it was like once a week, and they were like a regular, like art classes. Not nothing. We didn't do anything special. They would just let us draw anything and. It was kind of random, but the, the decision to pursue uh, art was when a friend of mine from high school, she, she went for the design college that I've been telling you about, and uh, she said, okay, uh, they, they let me in without a portfolio because she wasn't drawing. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because like, I thought like everyone that goes to study drawing at university, they already know how to draw, you know? But it was like a private university, so their goal was a bit 
also like, hey, let's let everyone that wants to study because they're going to pay us. So maybe they will pick up art and they, they, they're going to become good and then it's going to be fine. And if not, they're going to quit and we'll still probably get some money out of them, you know? Uh, so I was like, they're out of luck, basically. I, I don't know if I would have had the guts to apply by myself without knowing that that friend without a portfolio entered. Uh, by the way, if you want, I can start the demo thing. Because right now people see my face, right? Oh, uh, yeah. People are looking at your face. Which okay. is fine if you want. Uh, yeah, you can start a demo if you want. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. can, you, can you guide me? Okay, share screen. But I, I haven't been using. And I, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused how I can uh, share the screen. How do I change? I'm trying to figure out how to change the title on Twitch. For some reason, it still says has our last week's title, even though I had updated it earlier. It doesn't let me screen share. Um, it would be the couple the couple dots at the top right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, found it. So, can you see anything right now? Uh, yeah, we can see your white canvas. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna hit play. Sure. So I did the sketch just before the stream because sometimes I feel not comfortable like talking and drawing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's it's still in real time. I kind of sketch for one hour and a half and it's just a random sketch, like uh, nothing. I, I, I didn't want to say anything with this sketch. So it's just like random scribbles. And by the way, I cannot see the chat if people are writing stuff because like uh, I only have one monitor. So and oh. right now it's being used for <laughs> to, to screen share. So um, if you guys see questions in the chat that people have regarding the process, please let me know. Mm. No mm. worries. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll let you know if there's any questions. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about college and stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so I ended up to that at that design college, and uh, it was like a really good three years for me. The The program was really relaxed. Um, but unfortunately, the things that they were teaching there, they weren't quite what I'm doing right now and what I wanted to do. Because I was going online and seeing all this uh, on all these forums, how people would uh, approach drawing, how they would do things. Mm -hmm and how they would apply it in this uh, entertainment industry. So my goal was to work either in video games or maybe movies or I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if your sketch is actually playing. It's not yeah, playing? It's, it's just a white canvas that's not. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to do then. Because like for me, it's playing. Um, hmm. That's weird. Maybe you can change the player. The player. Yeah. Uh, try maybe Windows Media Player or something. I don't know. It's I'm DLC, not sure. Then... I'm not sure if his audio is still coming through. Can you hear us? <clears throat> what? Are you... Uh, oh, there he is. Hear... Uh, no, we can't. Okay, now we can't hear you. Okay, let's try one more time with the share screen. Uh, uh, thank you for letting us know that the... Someone in the chat told us that the uh, title of the stream was... For some reason, it was still last week, so we got it changed. Uh, taking the decision to become a concept artist is pretty hard, especially today when there's so many. Uh, there was a, I, I don't know if it was really a question, but it was more of a comment. Someone says, taking the decision to become a concept artist is pretty hard, especially today when there are so many already and more and more skills are required for this position. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Okay, we can see your, uh. Okay, so now it's 
it's actually moving, right? Yep, we can see your sketch. Uh, can you repeat the question? Because I was like, kind of like figuring out. No Sorry. worries. I cannot um, multitask. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's not really a question. It's more of a comment, but I think you might have th some thoughts on it. It says, taking the decision to become a concept artist is pretty hard, especially today when there are so many already and more and more skills are required for this position. Yeah, I agree. Like with the skills, like I feel like we're becoming like uh, slowly multitaskers like that, that can do a bit of everything. And for sure, like uh, I wouldn't get hired with the skill that I had back in the day mm. right now, you know, because <clears throat> right right now I see people starting in like uh, in one year and then they're they become like they start using 3D photo bashing and all that stuff. And it's definitely an advantage. It's still like I think only the, the ones that have a good eye for design will succeed. Mm -hmm. we like using these techniques because it, it's not like okay i'm uh, cutting a photo and putting it in my painting and that's it I, I call it done it's like the the successful ones i feel they 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 show us something new through through, through their life experience and uh, that's how they they get like popular and uh, end up getting jobs you know they're, they're not afraid to show their vision on things. They're not just copying the photo and, or, yeah. So yeah, I agree with uh, the, the increasing level in the industry. Um, but that's also maybe not true because all these softwares are becoming easier and easier to use. Mm. I mean, look at Blender, it's like, it's not that hard to use, and I see a lot of people picking it up, and yeah, they just start doing things, and they have EV real-time render engine, and like it's getting crazy. Yeah, you can basically yeah. model and see your materials and lighting as you're <laughs> modeling, which wasn't it was impossible when like ten years ago, and, and like, even a few years ago probably. I don't know. Like, do you guys know if other softwares can do what Blender is doing right now with the I, nah, I don't think they're doing it as well, Eevee. especially with Eevee. It's just incredible. Yeah. Um, no, but but actually, I had never thought of that before. Because, um, I mean, like I got an Oculus Rift and I opened it up and within a day, I was able to use um, medium, sculpt in medium in VR for work, like good enough. Yeah, it's See? So it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't do any have anything to do with polygons and stuff because I was just sculpting. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's so a good point. The tools are getting easier to use, and definitely it it helps. Uh, like if you want to be part of today's industry, keep uh, a, a curious mind on software. Just follow all these groups that are like, uh, let's say, Blender or VR oriented or mari substance all mm -hmm. this stuff just check them out and um, follow them closely and yeah like blender when i started like uh, maybe four years ago um of course it had this add-on community but everything changed um, at least for me like when i saw that vitali bulgaro video uh modeling this slot robot thing and i saw how he wasn't caring about uh performing like uh, like good geometry, you know? He was interested in uh, creating shapes. So for me, like uh, when uh, Hard Ops appeared a few years ago, that kind of allowed me to start creating like uh, a Bulgar Ops. Like I was focusing on uh, the look, not on the polygons and all that crap that doesn't really interest me as a concept artist, you know? Mm -hmm. Those things are good only if you're animating or doing production work. So yeah, um, shout out to Hard Ops, <laughs> very good. Hard Ops oh, is a yeah. game changer. It is <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and box cutter, decal machine, uh, all that, everything that machine does also like. It's th crazy. those tools are I mean like getting ridiculous these days. Like 
I'm checking them them out every day. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like if you don't <clears throat> check stuff out every single day in a week, everybody's going to be using different programs, and you have to catch up again. Yeah, but uh, that's, that's it for me because like right now at work I'm doing some tasks and I'm only using ZBrush because mm -hmm. it's easier. I still love uh, sculpting in Blender, but in ZBrush I have more resources organized and uh, I can do like the stuff that I want a bit faster. <laughs> But man, like if I wouldn't have ZBrush, I would definitely use Blender, <laughs> like just for everything. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, like here on the, the sketch, um, I don't know if you like the people that watch. If you check this apply per tip thing in the color dynamics, if you activate color dynamics and choose apply per tip, each time you do a brush stroke, it's gonna be a different color. So just drag the sliders here: hue, saturation, and brightness. Oh. And see, like I'm not color picking anything, but it's like uh, each time I, I do a brush stroke, it becomes a different uh, color. Hmm. So that's a nice way to have some variation in your color. So it just picks it randomly? Yeah, it's based on these sliders. So if you want, like, oh, let's say I pick magenta. And then if I crank up to 100% the hue, it's going to give me a, a random color each time. But if it's just at 2 or 3%, it's still going to be a magenta, but it's going to be like 2 or 3% different each time, you know? I never knew. It about creates that. this unnoticeable, subtle texture of colors. Exactly. Um, keep everything around maybe like less than seven percent or up to fifteen. Yeah. And then when and also change the spacing of your brush sometimes. Yeah. And that will just create this weird, like subtle color shift to make it look like noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. Yeah. But it looks it looks like right here you're actually kind of just using it to pick your colors for you. Yeah, it's like That's... see I, I did a brush stroke, I wasn't happy with the color, so I, I'm undoing and redoing with a different color. That's so really like, cool. Uh again, I, I don't work like this at work, so it's Yeah, no. This is just experimental work that I like to do in my free time. Like the whenever I'm I get some time for myself, I, I just sketch whatever comes out, you know. Yeah, the fun work. Yeah. It what do you do for work? Drawing money with this. <laughs> yeah. Because like I do this kind of stuff, but it's just for myself. I I didn't figure out a way to monetize it yet. Yeah, definitely. So um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, what did you what did you do before? You said you got into earlier. You said you got into um, art really early, like twenty, right? Yeah. So what did you did you do before that? Did you already have your your interest in art and? No, I like I said I wasn't doing anything art related till I became like twenty, okay. except those one hour per week in uh, before high school because in high school I didn't have any art classes mm. in the curriculum. Uh, no, I I was just like playing games before that. Uh, like that was the only time I was a gamer because <laughs> mm -hmm. right now I, I don't have time to play games and I feel like, I don't know, maybe you guys play games, but for me it's like, it's a huge time investment and it doesn't make me that happy. Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. Sometimes you might learn something from the game, but it doesn't really interest me to, to chill like that, you know? Yeah. I kind of feel the same too. Uh, do you guys play games or? <clears throat> I played a lot in high school. Um, I'll, I'll dabble in games here and there. Like lately, I've been I downloaded Fallout Four and I've been modding it. But I find that after I mod it, I actually don't play it at all. I just have fun modding it. Like that's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> but not really. No. Like I mean, I played a lot of like Call of Duty and all those kind of games growing up. But whenever I play games nowadays, it just feels like I'm wasting time. Like kind of. Yeah. guilty in a way or not really guilty more like i could be doing something better with my time yeah well like so for me like in my free time it's either i'm gonna do some maybe sport related activity mm. i really started to enjoy running mm. so almost every second day or third day we're going uh, out for a run and now, like before this time, I, I couldn't do like much running, but now I, I reach like I can do like 10 kilometers. So that's good. Wow. It feels really good to 
to, to be active. Because, hmm. man, I spent the last 10 years sitting down on a chair fucking drawing and sorry for cursing. <laughs> um, and yeah, like, it's kind of a big problem because, like, my health is kind of going away. And, uh, like, be just before the, the stream, before we went live, I was talking with the guys that I feel like I don't have the same energy anymore for that I used to have when I was 20. So um, now it's like I, I get that energy by just going out and running and doing something that mm -hmm. actually allows my brain to get oxygenated and uh, fresh, refreshed and get a break from all the work that I'm doing during the day. Yeah, I went running for the first time in a long time this morning. Uh, that's cool. So, so if, you hear me, you if you hear me coughing, that's because I've died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, I agree. It's it's so important to keep up your health, you know, make sure you have a good chair that doesn't murder your back. Yeah, but yeah, I was like that too. Like, I bought that chair, like, maybe when I was 23, 24. Mm -hmm. And in my mind was, like, I, I, I misused it, man, because, like, it was so comfortable that I thought, like, okay, it's like, it's never going to give me health problems, you know, but it's not like that. You can get the best gaming chair out there that mm -hmm. allows you to sit, like, for many hours, but... Your muscles need movement. Yeah. But, uh, we're still biological creatures. So until we upload our brains on a floppy disk, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to need to exercise the muscles. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what, what else should I uh, talk about? So uh, about your skills, man. Uh, you have a very <laughs> precise lines. Uh, uh, for people interested, what exercise or what type of drawings did you do a lot to get better at that? Because uh, precise lines can really save your time. Yes. Like if you keep using like undo, 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 you know, you know, a lot of guys do that, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm a huge advocate of doing this precise lines when people ask me what they should improve upon first. Mm -hmm. But at least that's my personal taste. But uh, what would you say? If people want to pick up doing very good precise lines and save their time and and all that, let me think about it when I started focusing on the precise lines. Because there was definitely a time around when Evan started doing like his daily sketches, or maybe even before that. Because like uh, I'm talking about Evan Amundsen, um, mm. so he's one of the most like. Uh, like I, I heard another artist, uh, Dan Warren, describing him as a line ballerina. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I wasn't really interested in drawing that much before this point in in the cleanness and the precision of the lines. But then when I saw these guys applying this, I, I slowly started doing that too. I, I don't use a Cintiq or like a an actual like a uh, tablet where you draw on the screen. I, I still use the Intuos because I kind of hate uh, seeing my hand. It, it kind of gets in the way. So um, why I'm telling you this is because like some people prefer doing those clean lines on a Cintiq and probably it helps them control better the line. So that's one thing that might get you where you want with the cleanliness of the lines. Uh, just give it a try at a screen a tablet, you know, like a Cintiq or Huion or like whatever other tablets are out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I improved it uh, was with gesture drawings. Uh, I used to do each hour, one hour of gesture drawings. And I set the timer to from 15 seconds to one minute. So my goal was to draw the human figure in one minute. And mm -hmm. setting that time limit for myself allowed me to to just use my 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 lines as precise as I can. You know, it's like it, it didn't allow me to go over and over the same line. It didn't allow me to undo. So it was like, okay, I'm seeing the pose. I'm drawing it, mm -hmm. and uh, slowly I developed muscle memory for like some sort of shapes because like humans have only like limited anatomy is not changing every time so it's like once you start to develop that muscle memory for anatomy it's like you don't even i don't even think about anatomy i just like draw and it happens 
you know. Um, and through those gesture drawings, I think I improved my line quality. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe line quality can come also from like uh, the brush that you're using. So if you if you're picking up a brush that's more squarish and uh, like tapered, like a long rectangle that uh, shape will give you different dynamic uh, dif a different dynamic to the line so it's more like calligraphy yeah pick up calligraphy that's something that i tried for like uh, a few days <laughs> I, I i don't want to become a professional calligraphician or what's the term for that um but i tried this for a few days and I learned quite a few things that I didn't think that would connect me back to drawing. So definitely give it a try. There are many videos on YouTube on calligraphy and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's it with line quality. Try yeah. to be more like Kim Junji, you know, like he's thinking what he's about to draw and then he performs it, you know, he, it's not like doing the scribbles and then trying to find through that chaos something. He has a good visual library that he applies constantly. So in his mind's eye, he can already see the stroke before he applies it. And that's why he's so good, I think. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned that you, you really like to do a lot of studies. I remember seeing quite a long time ago, you did those studies of like the, uh, the helicopter and the PlayStation controller and, and all yeah. those, um, you did a lot of those. Yeah. 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 That was back in the day when I was like having a lot of energy and basically when we were young, everything. Yeah. When, when I was young back in the day. Uh, so everything I did back then was wake up, eat and then draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was kind of like not doing <clears throat> much anything else and um, nowadays I don't study anymore uh, I think yeah <clears throat> studying is super useful but at, at one point it's like you have to decide okay I want to create original content or do I want to keep copying photos because I keep copying photos it's nice but I don't think it's gonna give you any jobs you know you you might uh, become this super good uh, ultra realistic uh, painter maybe you pick up like traditional oils or something and start doing those super realist shit that i i still don't understand like i understand the abstract art but i don't understand like why like some people like get super famous for just drawing a face like a, a camera would picture it you know like like with all the pores and stuff mm -hmm. doesn't show you anything original so so yeah, you might end up like one of those guys, but I think that's rare and limited to only a few people. So mm -hmm. expanding your knowledge and uh, understanding how to create more original art, I think can uh, take you a long way. Or again, <coughs> I might be talking shit, so <laughs> Wait, my man, like, I feel like I'm outdated a bit, to be honest. like. I, I, yeah, I mean, I think it's really just like, and that's kind of why we have you on, you know, is because like you have a way of doing things that other people might not have a way of doing and it can give people new insights into different ways that they can learn and grow as, as artists. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm original and this is all from my head. Like um, over the years, I, uh, I had a lot of inspirations like... Mm -hmm. uh, people that were artists before I was even drawing, you know, and when I say artists, it's like they had that vision and they, they were drawing, not because they wanted to get a job, they, they were drawing because they were passionate. So slowly I started like uh, getting more and more influences. So it's like, in a way, that's how I'm uh, coming up with this experiments, you know, it's like I'm, I'm mixing and matching all those influences. Mm -hmm. into what I, I consider is my style but of course I don't have really an original style so um, what, when, uh, when I feel stuck I just think on, on like one of these influences of mine and how they would approach the problem and sometimes it gets me out of the hmm. the, the problem you know mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What, um, uh, like what kind of, what are you like shooting for with where you want to kind of be as an artist? Like what, what style, what, like, what do you want to say through your work? You know, are you more a fan of making like a, making, I guess, like a statement through your work or in interpreting things in a certain way or like designing? I want to become an Instagram filter, you know, <laughs> and when I'm saying that it's more like, um, okay, you, you have those filters that you put on your photo and they show you your photo, but in a slightly different way. So mm. what I'm trying to say is like, I want to show things the way, like I saw them, you know, mm. um, I want to show people what I think it's cool because like when I, when I draw something and I post something, it's most of the times I was happy with the results. So I want to become the Alex Negra filter, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, when people look at my stuff, they would see like, oh, so that's how you see art. That's what you like. And I'm not trying to say anything with my art at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really into like, uh, I would say like lately I'm focused more on uh, beauty and color and shapes, but again, beauty is like, uh, each person has a different notion of beauty. So mm -hmm. everything that I'm doing and it's personal, it's following this criteria for me. Okay. Um... It's, it's very ab abstract, but I don't know, like after doing like eight hours of work at work based, always based on brief and I'm required to be like super like precise and uh, realistic sometimes. And uh, yeah, like that burns me out. Like I did it for like three years in a row right now. And it's, yeah, I can still do it for probably another three years. But when I go home, I feel like I need to do something for myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So um, you you started off doing illustration. You worked for you worked with Applebot. You worked with a number of other, you know, other places and doing illustration work for that. What um, kind of how how do you feel like your transition was from being an illustrator and enjoying doing that to then later becoming a concept artist and then being much more interested in the design aspect. Yeah. The, the transition was super fun. Cause like, I was like super sick of like, uh, illustration work. I, t till this day, I, I kind of hate illustration. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I feel it's just like work done without any purpose. Hmm. With design, I feel like I'm building something, you know, but for illustration was like all about the boobs most of the times. And I mean, yeah, I like boobs, but it's, it's, it's a bit empty, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, it's cool if you're like 15, 14 and I just draw all the naked women that you want. But at one point it's like, Hey, what I'm trying to do here is like, I feel like doing something else that that has a bit more value, something like to show that, okay, th this was me. I lived on this planet and this is what I produced in this time. And uh, this is a, like a mirror of, of the world in front of me, you know, like I want to, I want to show something that, that is like more unique nowadays. You know? Um, so does that mean that you're kind of more more interested in like world building and what what about like illustrations that show your designs that you've created like something like a world or something are you are you interested in like making stories or like making a what would be um, like a comic or something like that <clears throat> the closest i've got to making a story or a comic was with my <laughs> monkey character tika hmm but that's still in development. Like I, I kind of stopped posting stuff with mm. Zika. It's still developing somewhere in my on my hard drives. Um, but I'm not ready to share that yet. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Also, because like it, it keeps on evolving from one thing to another, and like uh, probably like I, I spent like two or three years already on it, and mm. it's still like. <coughs> I cannot put the finger on it. 
Oh, man, I'm so random when I talk that I forget what was the question. <laughs> and... If you're interested in illustrating your own designs and stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, with illustration, most of the times it's like, uh, it's not really about the design. It's more about showing a pretty scene or mood. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like I, I would love to do illustration, but just for myself. Uh, but you're saying as a development of an artist, there was a time in your life that you actually liked the illustration, right? Uh, yeah, when right in the beginning. Mm, and then after you did it for, I don't know, let's say a certain few years, you kind of thought, well, I've done enough illustration. Maybe I'll try something better. And also you mature as a person as well, right? You thought, first you thought the illustration was like maybe mesmerizing yeah. to you, but eventually yeah, you like figure it out. It was like amazing. It's, it was all about that rendering, man. But as yeah. soon as I <laughs> kind of started doing 3D, I kind of realized that computers can re render better than me. And, uh, and at that point I started thinking like, okay, so what can I bring new to the table, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing um, you told me when I was ask when I was picking your brain when I when I had you on Skype. I was like, so what about this? So what about that? And you're just like, I hate rendering. I don't want to render at all. I want the computer to do that for me. I just want to design. <clears throat> yeah, like uh, it's, I thought that was cool. I, I mean, especially for <laughs> client work. Yeah, I think rendering is a huge waste of time. <laughs> Cause like if I I build everything in 3D, the like I can press a button and literally be done in like five minutes. The <laughs> well the render is done, but I, I can get to put more effort into building that image, you know, mm -hmm. making sure it's good. And I, I've been doing a bunch of illustration here and there uh, in the past few years. Um, I did that Overwatch thing mm -hmm. and with Reinhardt. So that one I I built the the robot in Blender. I render it and then I paint it over it and then some clouds in the back and some rockets and it was done. Mm. But I, I had more fun building the robot, like actually thinking on how to model it than, uh, than I don't know, starting to work on the illustration. Mm -hmm. I, I get bored super fast too. Like I, I cannot, like if let's say what I'm doing right now on the screen, it's like uh, would be my style. and. I could do it maximum for like a few months and mm -hmm. then I would get so burned out from, from this. I constantly need to change. Things bore me like super fast. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah, this thing, it's, yeah, it's random. It's a random sketch. But as I was sketching, I was thinking at what, what could the story be? So eventually I ended up like uh, thinking at the team, like you're not going to see the final thing today. Mm -hmm. um, and if I will continue it, um, this will be like a sad fairy that maybe all her royal family has died or something. And she she finds a pocket watch in the forest that's broken. And uh, she picks up one of the arms of the, you know, the, the arms of the watch and she kills herself. Oh. And I thought the thematic would be like out of time or something. And yeah, it's like I'm trying to think more at this kind of like meanings. That's a great idea, man. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I don't usually start like this. Sometimes I have the story in the mind when I'm starting a sketch like uh, like this, and I slowly evolve it to have more meaning. Mm. I think on my art station I have uh, that um, violinist guy that's kind of blue. So for that one, the like it was based on a picture that I took uh, on the streets. Uh, it was like. Um, St. Patrick Parade thing, and there was this guy playing the violin, and I, I really liked the, 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 the picture in the end, but it wasn't sharp enough, so I wasn't going to edit it or post it anywhere, so oh, I, I used it show as it my own stream. reference, and uh, the story behind that illustration, like, I started drawing him with blue lines, so that gave me the whole feeling that it's a cold character, is maybe he's dead, so... Eventually, I decided, okay, he's a dead character. He was a mu musician, and uh, <clears throat> people didn't pay him, so he eventually froze to death in the streets, and he died. But he returned as a, a spirit that, um, uh, you know, those ice flowers that appear in your window when it's super cold outside? Mm 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when he's playing the violin, he has a bunch of uh, creatures, like uh, tiny birds. Like if you look in the illustration, there are a few birds around him. So those birds go around and they decorate the windows of the the people's houses with those ice flowers. And yeah, that's another example of a, a story that I would think based on a sketch like this, like a random sketch like this. Mm-hmm. So definitely a lot of storytelling going on in your head. And what do you think of <clears throat> storytelling versus design? Like, do you think they're they're two sides of the same coin or do you think they're kind of the same thing? Uh, for me, they're kind of different. Like I use different parts of the brain, I feel, when I'm designing. Uh, when I'm designing, I'm trying to imagine how I'm using uh, the, the item that I'm designing. Mm. So at work, I had to design a weapon that folds itself. So the whole process was like to block in with basic shapes in 3D the, the weapon and uh, figure out the animation first. Because like that was the important part. That was the goal. Like uh, the weapon needs to fold itself. So we have these volumes that perform a certain uh, action. And in the end, you end up with with a different shape. So, mm. I I really like I never done animation before, but that felt the logical uh, approach to do it. You know, so I I told myself how to keyframe animate in Blender, and uh, I, I did that. And once I had those shapes, I started designing the shapes. So let's say I had a barrel that was basically a cylinder in the first animation stage. And that that cylinder, I, I uh, applied the design aesthetic on it, and it became the barrel with all the holes and all that crap that attaches to the gun. And mm-hmm. but yeah, for for that uh, type of task, I would totally think differently. I, I'm not as free as I'm in this sketch that you're seeing right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Specs is creating a lot more. Um... You, your your design's kind of most kind of des- defined by the uh, by the spec that you have. Yeah, which which can be really fun. I mean, you can sometimes you can be the most creative within a spec. Exactly. Like, uh, and I I ha- haven't seen this before starting to design things. Like, uh, I I really saw the power of uh, limitations. Like how good the designs can become if you're just keeping your ideas to a minimum like two or three ideas per sketch like for this sketch i'm doing right now it's like a fairy pocket watch and flowers and maybe insect Mm -hmm. but i wouldn't go to add another element other than this because like then it becomes like so random Mm -hmm. think clear things are are very good for for uh, the viewer yeah it could become less confusing the better well, simplicity is genius. I yeah, just, I don't I really saw hate the, the, the other day. transformer designs. You know the the crazy designs. I, I think they achieve something unique, and that's uh, a very good thing. But the problem with that is like people, I don't think they see the transformer movie designs as iconic as the cartoon ones. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I'm, I'm kind of struggling for that uh, I, iconic thing lately. When I'm doing something, I want people to remember it and maybe be able to draw it themselves, you know, when mm-hmm. they see it. Yeah, it's simple, but maybe it has a bit of design, but... Um, That's funny. I, I really wish that the simplicity transfers the message the message of the design for the viewer. Mm-hmm. Well, I know someone who really likes a Transformers movie, and he lives on the other side of my brother's wall in this apartment because he's listening to movies with explosions in them every single night. Yeah. We, we can hear them through our whole apartment. Boom! Dinosaurs and explosions. and <laughs> yeah. well, At least he's enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. So There's I guess, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I guess someone likes those movies. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. is like... Uh, I I kind of developed different tastes over the years. So I was enjoying all kinds of movies, but nowadays, like, I cannot stand some movies. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I feel they're not... I, I'm all for the story <coughs> now. I don't care about the visuals <laughs> anymore. Mm. A good story always moves me. Like, have you guys seen uh, Zima Blue? 
Zimbabwe. I don't think so. How do you it's spell that? that? Love that and robots. Oh. No, I haven't seen that yet. No, wait, Love Death Robots? Yeah. Oh, Zima Blue, right. The uh, oh. the artist. Yeah, yeah, so don't spoil it for anyone. But no, yeah, no. that was my favorite. Um, that was my favorite, uh, uh, like, segment of that, 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 that series of animations. Hmm. And I powerfully resonated with the message. So, yeah, like, because, like, over the years, I felt like I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm trying to become all these things, but right now I'm going towards simpler themes and more powerful, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> as far as, so I guess you're kind of nowadays, like for example, like this, this I, I guess is kind of design and illustration, right? Like this image you're yeah. making right now. So. You, would you say that you're more interested in illustration as long as you're telling a story that you can resonate with? Yeah, maybe. Okay. But I think my my, my biggest problem is also with client work. Yeah. Because like sometimes I don't agree with the feedback. I strongly disagree. Yeah. And I'm sure a and, lot of the time uh, you're right too. I'm I'm also like I'm losing the the will to to continue the image after mm -hmm. like a, a feedback that I might not agree with, you know, mm -hmm. I still do it, but I feel like it's lost because like I could have done it better, you know? Yeah. So that, that kind of bothers me, you know, I'm still um, a professional. I still apply the feedback that I'm receiving, but yeah, in a way it's like, yeah, it's my duty to explain to the guy why it shouldn't be like that. But, most of the times they don't listen so yeah and most of the times like uh, you might not be even in contact with the the people that are looking at your work so you have to just have trust the art director on the other side or because mm -hmm. maybe they have they're seeing something that like they have the bigger picture you know and they might think that okay with this feedback you're going to be closer to that big picture that we have in our minds so yeah. But yeah, like uh, this is what uh, professionals tell you: like to detach yourself from uh, from work and just kill your darlings. And <laughs> but that kind of gets annoying for me. That yeah, one. makes you feel like the person you're drawing right now. I feel like a monkey, you know, like a, I, like I'm just there to to do the thing, but <laughs> I have no value. Mm. No, I, I I get that. Have you, do you have any interest in, in like jump starting your own IP or, or design or something that like your own story that kind of you call the shots and maybe people can resonate with that? No, besides uh, Tika, I didn't have anything like that. Mm. I did some sketches a few years ago when IP was the hot new term in town mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, I want to develop my own IP and mm. uh, I was like, yeah, I have to do that too. So uh, I started doing some sketches without any thought behind them. So they ended like they started with nothing. So mm. yeah, I know. Um, I know Ate, that guy at I think he's at Riot yeah. was making his Path of Miranda. Yeah, I project. think he's still developing it. Yeah, I thought that was. I don't think I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, now he's uh, he's releasing his uh, game. Ati, you have to pay me for making promotion for your game. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, I would love to get him on someday. Well, I can talk to him for you. <laughs> oh, really? You know him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I I can guarantee he will join you. But oh, um, like, I can that talk would be and that would be about, awesome. That would be cool, man. The... Well, I know the only the only way I I think I was able to get in contact with you is because we were working on a project together yeah. and I, I added you on Skype and I'm just like, Hey, like join <laughs> us. <laughs> well, I'm happy that that encounter encounter happened. Um, yeah. The honor is mine to be here. And That's, we really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I've been a, I have been a fan of your work since I started as I mean, an artist, fun. which it's is so weird to hear people say this. Cause I, yeah. I'm I'm the ultimate fanboy, man. Like I used to fanboy over some people, like hardcore. <laughs> yeah, man. 
No, when when you did your level up session with uh with the guys on that channel, that I was still hate the the way I did the entrance on that. I, I felt so childish. I just <laughs> popped my head from the side and like fuck man, I absolutely. Well, and the drawing was like so bad, like uh, <laughs> like I was trying to talk and draw at the same time, and like fuck that shit, man. I, I'm not <laughs> never gonna talk and draw at the same time. I'm yeah. always gonna record stuff and then let's talk about it. Like I can pay attention to the questions, and even like this, you see, like you ask me questions, and like sometimes I, I'm like, what? <laughs> what did you ask? <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I mean, thanks so much, man. Like means a lot. That's and yeah, that's, I'm happy that's that, awesome. That but it wasn't for nothing all this uh, art because like i think this is one of the biggest compliments when you hear someone tell you that you influence them somehow yeah i mean, yeah, I mean like a lot of like people, a lot of people oh, i can hear myself hear again me. um i think that I think a that a lot of people kind of know you as like the hardcore studier guy who's like doing yeah tons of studies figures <laughs> Quick poses. Uh, you were the guy who, t who uh, taught me about quick poses, and then I went there and did a whole bunch of drawings and stuff. So, quick poses yeah. is a website, by the way, for anybody who's it's listening. Oh yeah, it's great. I still. But quick this. poses is it the one with the three D mannequin or? Uh, I don't think so. I think I was doing them on lovecastle.com or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a long time ago. Like. Uh... But yeah, maybe it's quick poses. Mm, I think I heard about. But there it from, was something with a three D mannequin that had its skin off and. Uh... Pose maniacs. Oh yeah, pose maniacs. Yeah, that's what what was in my brain for quick poses right now. So I was like, oh man. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, I really love when quick poses arrived because like they made also a challenge. So they would track your time. You would input your email. So. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you could get a certificate that you did this many hours or like it was pretty cool yeah uh, yeah it's like <laughs> yeah i'm taking a figure drawing class in brainstorm right now and i've i'm my figure drawing is really lacking like i've I've only ever done like props and, and a little bit of environment work and mo mostly props actually just yeah. throughout my working career so far, which I, I do really enjoy, but I just know my, my figure drawing is lacking so much and it affects all of your design, like figure drawing and gesture, gestures in everything, you know, yeah. there's nothing that doesn't have a gesture to it. Like Dude, those fucking Disney animators oh. were able to animate a fucking flower sack to have emotion and feeling. So it's that's ridiculous. like, that's what's crazy. Yeah, that's when you realize how much gesture is in everything. So. Yeah, it's it's so important, and you know, I, I re what I realize is that uh, people who are really good at, at gesture, even if they can't design very well, they can still make stuff look really good. And a lot of the time, it's you know the client likes it because of that. They're like, well, this looks good. And, you know, you could have a good design with bad presentation, and they won't like it. Yeah. It's... Yeah, it's kind of important. I kind of hate the presentation part of stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to just design it. How much time and like um, it? It kind of like at work. You kind of have to do it for each step, so it's not, not like just for the final step. So mm -hmm. when you're submitting stuff, like sometimes like it really influences the the future of that task, like if they're gonna pick it up or not, like mm -hmm. the when you submit the sketches if you portray them as shit probably you're gonna be required to do another set of sketches so mm. it's kind of annoying because <laughs> you're like man this design is awesome and then you throw it up and it has a horrible presentation they're like this sucks do another one yeah like but yeah there's no other way to do it <laughs> yeah oh. like in my mind's eye when i make a design i kind of see the final but yeah the the clients won't always see that. Or sometimes it takes a while to trust you. Mm -hmm. Because I've been on this project for like three years and uh, initially the, the, the sketches and stuff had to be tighter in mm -hmm. the first part. So they would get approved. So you could actually arrive at the end stage with a, with a task. But mm -hmm. now it's like uh, I can even scribble something and uh, add a few colors and uh, send it for uh, the first round of feedback and 
yeah, they they accept it because I'm working basically with the same client mm -hmm. for a, a long time. So they kind of understand how I'm working and they started to trust my uh, design sense or my, yeah, like the way I'm doing the, the work. Yeah. No, I like, yeah, it's, it's just cool because yeah, I like having having relations like that, relationships with that, like that with the clients, and um, like I've I've worked with Volta for the last couple of years, and and initially I, initially I was working, you know, with the with the Singapore department, and then mm -hmm. eventually I got in, I was able to get um, referred to you know the main office in Quebec, and mm -hmm. after, finally finally last year they put me on this this big project. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I was so happy. Yes, so happy. Um, it's it's kind of like my first big, I, I guess I would say big as in like long term, large project, AAA. So it's yeah. it's been exciting and scary because everyone's so good. Uh, tell me about it. I was like also super scared. Like, uh, <laughs> before this one, I had, uh, I mean, this is my second project that I'm working on. Mm. Sorry for not being able to. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if I can tell anything. So, but yeah, like in my life, I worked on two AAA games, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it was like super scary in the beginning. Like, uh, even though I was like an illustrator for like so many years, when it, mm -hmm. it start started becoming like a concept art job, I felt like super noobish, and like it was a different way of working. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, your artwork's oh, in the book. And, like rendering wasn't important anymore. So. Yeah. So more about like <laughs> making the design work. Yeah. So it's it's a whole other level. Yeah, definitely. Uh let's see if we got any juicy questions. Uh um so what do you do to avoid actually i i want to start off with a more like fundamentals question. So a lot of people in our <clears throat> in our uh art quest server is uh, they're, they're you know like budding artists they want to become concept artists they want to become illustrators i saw one person wanted to um, work with magic the gathering trying to build their portfolio um, i've yeah. noticed actually that your fundamentals are are rock solid and you didn't go through any sort of like industrial design program did you that taught you perspective and draw through and all that uh, I learned all that stuff from videos that I found online from Scott Robertson with the draw through technique. Mm -hmm. and I, I played that video over and over again and I was drawing while he was like the first time I watched the tutorial and then I, I started applying and trying to do what he's doing and mm. yeah, like it, it was like a slow process. Mm -hmm. So um, you're self-taught basically completely. Yeah, but again, like, yeah, as I understand, self-taught is like studying by yourself, but yeah. still I had the, like, material where I studied from, you know? Yeah, just like at home, I guess, like self-learning, yeah. you know, teaching yourself from books, mentors, yeah, like, stuff like that. I think everyone knows what they suck at, so it, it, it's the easiest thing, so if you think <laughs> you suck, Yeah, I, I think you'd be feet. surprised. Um, There's no uh, easy answer, just draw what you're not good at. Yeah. And of course, like uh, as a beginner, you're not good at many things. So make a top three then and maybe today practice the number one. What's on mm -hmm. like in that top three and then number two, because like beginners have a different problem. They they because they're not good at a lot of things. They feel like uh, all of a sudden, like uh, overwhelmed with all the information that they need to know and they get discouraged and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. So there's no, like just pick whatever you want to draw for that day and draw only that <laughs> until you get bored. Or <laughs> no, not until you get bored. Until you you start to understand something. Mm -hmm. Make make it a goal of uh, actually learning something. Uh, keep a sketch, uh, a notepad around, and when you're learning something, just write it down. Or I used to write. On my studies, like I would drag an arrow and oh, I would write my observations. And man, as soon as I started doing that, I started learning so much faster because, mm -hmm. like, uh, in the beginning, uh, like right in the beginning when I picked up digital drawing, it, 
was a struggle between uh, understanding the Photoshop program and how to use brushes and all that crap. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really focusing on what I'm studying. I wasn't focused on rendering skin or anything. It was more like, fuck this brush. It doesn't do what I'm doing, <laughs> what I want to do. And, uh, and yeah, I wasn't paying attention to at anatomy or anything. So mm -hmm. when I switched my mentality, okay, now I'm going to focus on, uh, maybe how legs look like uh, then all i cared in a study was to to understand how the legs are built or stuff like that yeah i think it's 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 really easy to get overwhelmed with the software you know like at point at times you should just go back to like pencil and paper you know if you're learning anatomy like and you don't know photoshop like maybe just do it on paper until you at least know a little bit and then or or treat learning photoshop and learning anatomy as maybe you yeah. know separate tasks like an hour a day learning photoshop and exploring the tools and watching videos and an hour a day you know doing gesture drawing yeah let's see yeah that is that's great um how do you how do you keep yourself from being from from burning out i think i might know your answer to this but how do you keep yourself from burning out and getting bored i'm curious what do you think is the answer <laughs> i think you're gonna say i by trying new things <laughs> um yeah that's one of them but i feel like in the past years i felt constantly burned out so mm. my my solution to it is just push through <laughs> mm. it's like uh Sometimes I, I really hate drawing and all that is art related, mm. but yeah, just like hold my breath and jump. <laughs> like aye, aye. the burning out, it's also like kind of related for me with um, being afraid to start something new. Because mm. most of the times it's like uh, I'm. I'm in my head and I'm worrying, oh my God, what I'm going to do for this live stream, what sketch I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So in the past few days I was thinking and not doing, but mm. I did this sketch just before the stream. Like uh, I started like one hour, be one hour and a half <laughs> before the stream. And then I was like, oh, it's not that bad. It's okay, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. But till the moment I started drawing, it was like, agonizing because i was thinking so what the fuck i'm gonna talk about what what i'm gonna do i haven't prepared anything and all that anxiety it's it's kind of related to burnout to me mm. I, I don't know I, I i i wasn't like this before um yeah. i feel like i have a i know it's stupid but i feel like i have a responsibility to draw each picture better than the last one that i drew and just that way of thinking, it kind of destroyed some brain cells in my mind. Because <laughs> like, sometimes it's like, it's not that important what you're drawing. It's, it's, it's important just to draw. Hmm. And uh, the things will come to you, you know. Yeah, I I'm feel trying like... to say it's not stress that much. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because the stress and it's not even like your your stress, you know. It's like you, it's like almost like an overthinking sort of thing. You're like thinking about doing something and that thinking causes like a sensation that's more intense than than actually doing what you're thinking about doing. Yeah. So if, if that makes sense, maybe I said it weird. It's it's more oh, no. stressful to think about it than to actually do it. No, I, I, I definitely feel like a burning in the back of my head some days. It's like mm. it's it's just a, a big fear that overwhelms me, and I, I, it just it's in there. It's like, and at that point, I try to activate my logical brain and tell myself, "Hey, dude, like just chill. It's nothing bad is happening. Just draw. It's just a drawing. It's not important." Like, cause yeah, like uh, like. A few years ago, I had no anxiety when it came to drawing. I would just draw whatever. It's like... you but kind of I think ex... with the years, like I kind of started to develop this idea that all the drawings have to become better and better. And if I do a drawing that's not good, it brings me down like fast, man. Like, 
like I forget that I have so much experience and I should be more relaxed about it, you know. Hmm. You kind of feel like the opposite should happen. It's like the, the yeah, yeah. The, for me, like the same. Scary. But I feel like I have so much to lose, you know. Like I and I know that I don't have anything to lose, but mm -hmm. it's crazy. Is is the brain is a fucking weird thing, man. <laughs> Yeah. I don't understand how brains work and why do they work like this? Yeah, definitely. Um, what I got, a, I got a kind of interesting question to kind of follow this up. So what, um, how is your, how is your mindset back then versus your mindset right now? Like what, and, and what do you think that, you did or thought back then that you learned now was either wrong or has just changed back in the day i had a big ego hmm. and that kind of pushed me through so in a way i would i'm grateful that i had a big ego because like i could like i would literally look at other artists and i would say like <laughs> If I study like one year, I know I can be better than that guy, you know, mm. now I don't see it that way anymore, but that huge ego of mine, uh, actually made me draw a lot. So, <laughs> and focus on like, I had a battle mentality and right, and right now I don't have that anymore. I'm not trying to prove to anyone that I know how to draw or now what I'm doing is for myself, but mm. yeah, that huge ego was like, uh, it was a, a, a blessing and a curse in the same time, you know, because mm -hmm. at one point I realized that I, I was a bit douchey and uh, yeah, like I was saying things that I, I should have said about other artists and yeah, mm. anyway, <laughs> I, I, I like to think that I don't have an ego or if I have it, it's like way toned down right now. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, at least from what I've seen, I, I think you're a pretty humble, humble guy. Thank so, <clears throat> um, it's funny. Uh, Burren, you got you got anything for us? You got any thoughts? What, at the moment, as of today, what is the most difficult thing to draw or to think of unless you do heavy research or something? Okay, backgrounds. I hate drawing backgrounds. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's man, like, uh, I think back in the day when I enjoyed the illustration, that's the only thing I hated about illustration. <laughs> like I, I would draw the character and I would be like, oh my God, now I have to draw the background and the background would take me the longest. Cause like when I, it, I think it's like for everyone else, when you're working on something they're not enjoying, you're not putting your 100%. So mm. that's funny. <laughs> I know another Romanian artist who feels the same way. You know her. <laughs> uh, who? <laughs> Laura. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that. I, yeah. I messaged her a while back, and she's like, I hate backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I try to convince her to come on, but she's like, no way. She's like, I am Why? too antisocial. Come on. I am the first Romanian. Now you have to carry on the tradition. Yeah, From now absolutely. on, only like Romanian artists. <laughs> yeah, I want to get her on so bad. Um but anyway, so backgrounds, huh? Um, yeah, backgrounds, like, I don't know. I hate drawing trees and they're super popular in backgrounds. I hate drawing rocks and again, Dude, a lot of rocks are just, in backgrounds. I just, like to draw clothes, <laughs> clouds, so. <laughs> so everything that I'm, I'm, I'm doing illustration wise is like, I try to do a lot of foggy or like misty things that hide the most of the background. It's like the, the I, I think it was a joke, but it was like, uh, why they always draw grass in like old school illustrations because they didn't know how to draw feet or probably they didn't like to draw feet, you know, like they were just covering up stuff. <laughs> and of course it gives you some overlap there. So that's good. That's really good. <laughs> oh yes, gotta get that parallax in there. <clears throat> just do a uh, Bob Ross, man, and you'll be good. <laughs> oh yeah. Make love to the canvas. Mm -hmm. actually like a while ago like and I, not a while ago like a long time ago I, uh, I i got a few of his videos and i was trying to follow them digitally yeah it was fun the guy really knows his stuff like 
after I yeah, went man. through all the fundamentals and everything, and I hear Bob Ra, and I like watch a video, and he's like doing stuff with his palette knife and his brush, and I'm like, man, like Fang taught us that, like that's crazy, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty legit. Like he understands his perspective and how it works with environments and all those little tricks to make paintings go super fast. So, but he doesn't bore audience with like the mm -hmm. fundamental stuff, you know. He just go, oh, just pick the blue and go with it, but. But deep down, he knows what kind of a blue it is, for example, right? Mm -hmm. We see That's your how I would see desktop. It. Yeah, I, I just started the second video because, like, the first part ended. Okay. I, I break my recordings from time to time just so I don't get any corrupt files. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> that makes sense. I have not had a corrupt video file yet. I'm going to be sad <laughs> when... I... Um, speaking of ego... Yeah. Like, at least for me, like, my experience would be that I also had a lot of ego, too, you know? And then people used to tell me I'm good, 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 because those people don't really draw or don't care. That would be my family and friends. Yeah. But now I think, like, maybe it did help me to a certain point because, oh, since I'm very good, I'll just keep going, right? And, of course, yeah. I would be drawing all the time, but I didn't know I was doing it wrong. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes my, my friend would say, oh, Buran, your drawing is kind of weird, but looks good, but it's weird. Like something is off. I can't tell what it is. Yeah, yeah. But then can you imagine if I like, I don't know, met someone who's super brutally honest and said, look, kid, your drawing sucks. And, you know, like if I yeah. had met someone very early, then if I didn't have an, that kind of ego, I would have probably got crushed. But since nobody told me, I just kept going and going and going and going mm -hmm. until I finally realized, hey, wait, I am a shitty artist. You know, <laughs> I only went because people complimented me. And that's that's about it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a weird experience. Uh, yeah, that that's just came into my head when you were talking about ego a few minutes ago. The, the thing with ego, like the first time my ego <laughs> roared was like i was posting on this romanian forum and i was like doing like it was my speed paint era like i started art by doing speed paints so, you know, <laughs> because like I, I would see all these sped up videos and i thought like man this guy draws super fast so I, that's the secret i have to draw fast <laughs> so i was doing like super shitty sketches and uh, i was posting them on this forum and no one was like leaving me any reply so i was like already starting to write comments like Oh, so no one is leaving me comments, like, am I doing something wrong and stuff? And then I would post another, like, five speed paints and, like, still no comments. And then one day, like, this guy, Eric, like, wrote to me, like, hey, man, like, you're just posting, like, uh, visual farts here. It's like, what the fuck? It's like you're talking on the phone and not even looking at what you're drawing and you're posting what whatever you're doing. Like, maybe if you would work a bit uh, harder and, like... Uh, like actually do something people would actually talk to you and give you advice but right now you're like a piece of shit <laughs> and man i was like so frustrated with that guy I was like oh my god i'm gonna show this guy because like and only later like after a few years i realized that his honesty has actually made me want to prove to him like i mean i mean my ego wanted to prove to him that i'm i'm not that shitty and uh, i'm gonna show him that he's wrong but yeah, it's like I was totally a piece of shit back then. So it's like <laughs> for me, the ego allowed me to to continue because he was that honest, uh, brut brutally honest guy for me. And yeah, I can understand some people might quit in that point, but for me, it was like, like I told you, I had this fighter spirit. Like, fuck off! I'm gonna show you what I can, you know. Um, so yeah, some people are like that, or some people when they hear compliments, they might be like, "Okay, my job is done. I'm not gonna. I don't need to improve. Fuck that." So be careful who you are and what kind of mentality you have, like as a beginner, because like uh, both of them can be damaging. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's. That's definitely true. I mean, but it, it's interesting when you when you talk about like your ego carrying you through the practice, you know, like you're so mad at someone who like tore apart your work that you stay up yeah. all night practicing. It's like and now it's like working your rage is like working for you. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I had an interview with uh, Cycro back in the day, if you mm. guys remember. His I YouTube think I've channel. heard of him. I don't think he's doing any more uh, YouTube. Or I might be wrong, so it's just like go and check out if you're interested. Um, and it was in that time where my ego was at its peak, you know, and uh, I actually talked about using anger to to draw the drawing, but we talked again about before about that before the stream somehow. And then like he posed to me this question that sounded like fake, you know, because like, so Alex, how do you use anger to to draw better? Like, it sounded like so emo in a way when I heard it back. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Are we the baddies? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, I totally felt like a rock star that, back then. Like, yeah. Um, I remember on the uh, on the level up sessions, Jonas was talking about um, about that kind of thing. He, he's like, he's like, dude. He's like, we're not rock stars. He's like, this is just a job. He's like, yeah. it's just, just, it's like a plumber job. Like plumbers know how to fix pipes. We know how to draw things. Like it's, I don't think he used plumber as an example, but I kind of feel like that now that I'm a, uh, now that I'm a concept artist, I'm just like, I don't know. It's not like that. You know, yeah. I, I still don't want to do it after I'm done with the work. So the, also the thing with, uh, after I went to FCD, right, I just realized that drawing is has nothing to do with talent nothing to do with mm. ego like successful drawing is basically have only thing to do with fundamentals visual communication uh what's your sense of color theory like what what you're doing it for it, it became this extreme for me i started looking at paintings from a i would say really harsh math mathematical standpoint because yeah. like even like you might say, well, Puran, what, what about the paintings that just splash like colors? Like, uh, what's the guy, Jackson Pollock from America yeah. or something? Yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah, that drawing is designed for a certain environment. And then you go, what about the Asian ink drawings? Yeah, that looks nice in a, I don't know, like a monastery or something. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. I started looking at all these drawings from just purely utility and just numbers point of view. And and when I try to explain it to people that way, they they don't like to hear that. Like yeah. I just go, yeah, it's because it's going to be in a tiny screen. That's why it's small and details are like at that level and this stuff. And then after that, um, uh, maybe, maybe you had the same experience. Like once you realize that as a concept artist, that's kind of becomes seeped into everyday life things, right? Like every new education or anything you learn. Kind of goes that way. Did it ever happen to you, or is it just me being crazy talking right now? No, for me it was like when I started drawing, I uh, I considered that I have no talent. So for me it was purely mathematical, like you're saying that I would uh, see. Okay, if I do 100 sketches, my skill will improve this much, and if I do 100 more, it's gonna be even better. And uh, I I kind of like coming from this uh, uh, numbers background, you know, hmm. I, I kind of approached drawing with the same mentality. Like, okay, to, to get better at math, you just solve problems on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So all I did was that. And uh, it, it makes sense to me what you're saying, because like, that's exactly in the beginning how I was approaching. And I'm still approaching that. Like when I see something, I don't see it as like, unachievable or only for the talented. I know that it's achievable because it, it was made by a human and humans are just like computers. It's like they're, they're going to do whatever you, you make them do. Mm -hmm. You just need to force your will into a direction. And that's what's going to happen to you. If you wish to become like a super good musician, then start acting like one. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. I'll get to Elliot's question in a second, but I, I, I kind of wanted to follow that up with, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard, I, I think it's in a book. I think someone wrote like a book on it, but it was about deliberate practice, which is yeah. kind of like you talked about earlier with, you know, you draw an arrow pointing at your weakest point and then you work on that and you improve that way. 
you know like you don't get better by avoiding your weaknesses you get better by facing them head on and yeah like and i think that a lot of people um at least who are listening to this i know kind of don't really know how to approach improving i'm guessing like a lot of people in the discord for example have been drawing for for a number of years and they feel like they've kind of hit a stopping point where they're just like well i'm not anywhere near a professional but i cannot figure out how to get better and i would go i mean you know how much burn and i talk about it you know go back to the fundamentals practice your weak points yeah i i was um I, I was like, when I started teaching, giving advice to people, I realized that, oh, they sh we should completely approach it with like, let's say your knowledge in atomy, your knowledge in lighting, your knowledge in mechanical stuff, your knowledge in rendering, your knowledge in line drawing, so your skill in controlling your muscles. Like, you know what I mean? There's like five, six, if you're looking at it from an RPG character standpoint, you have all these stats, right? Yeah. And you kind of need to ask people, okay, where does your anatomy stand? Where does your color understanding stand? And if you only do color, color, color studies, then that will get better. And once you reach to that level, you stop and then you say, okay, now, now I need to focus on my line drawings. And then you focus there and then you need to focus there. Like I, I thought about like um, approaching it, like when you, when, when Colton said arrow, right? Point it with an arrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because, because, oh, it's just drawing. Like people go, oh, just drawing. Like, what do you mean drawing? Drawing what? Is it line? Is it paint? Is it render? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I started looking at it in a way like, you know, building. It's like a couple of buildings, I would say. And then just add one brick to that house, one brick to that house, one more brick to that house. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. some people only have like a skyscraper for line drawings. But then they have no no like foundation for any other one vice versa right yeah. something like that yeah uh what would colton say on this yeah i mean that's that's absolutely true i mean i i think a lot of schools approach it the same way you know like like fzd or or art center or brainstorm they all have specific classes that teach specific skills you know there's no over there's no one class that teaches an overall thing they're different they're different branches like of of things like perspective is kind of like one of the one of the higher ones because if you know perspective you know and then you learn anatomy then you can put humans in perspective you can put anything that you're you can put rendering in perspective you can put you know trees environments rocks you know water anything that exists in the physical world you put in perspective so it's one of the things that you really need to you know double down on early on i would say um but they are different bricks you know like there's anatomy there's you know, rendering, there's color theory, there's composition, there's, and a lot of these kind of overlap in certain areas. Some overlap more than others, but um, I, w I would definitely say that there's a couple, you know, key, like almost keystone elements that if you don't have it, everything kind of falls apart. But yeah. And, and like storytelling is one of them, you know, you could have the best perspective in the world, but if nobody cares about what you're drawing, then it doesn't matter. If you don't care about what you're drawing, then you're not going to enjoy drawing, you know? So it's like someone has to, so, someone needs to care. I, I was, um, I was listening to uh, Anthony Jones, mm. uh, tutorial on YouTube. And he said something about like, he, yeah, he said he, he treats concept of like a car or something. And he would ask someone, what's the most important part of a car? And they might say the engine. Then they mm -hmm. go, okay, if, the, if you don't have a driver, you can't drive it. Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, it's the driver. But then if the driver doesn't have a car, the car won't run. And they say, no, it's the wheel. Then if it doesn't have a wheel, you can only turn on the engine. And, mm -hmm. then, and then they go like, well, I think it's the, I don't know, like whichever part, right? So he said, just like that, like every nice painting must be like, it must have the engine, it must have a decent wheel, it must have a good driver and mm -hmm. then needs to have like a cabin etc cetera, etc cetera, to make a solid nice car if you're missing either one the car will not run which is like if you're missing one fundamental part mm -hmm. then basically you just destroyed everything else in a way that's that's what he said uh maybe i'm 
I don't remember it fully, but that's what I got out of what he said. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing. So what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I definitely think you, you need to walk before you can run. <laughs> I definitely think that all big things have small beginnings. <laughs> all these words that mean the same thing, you know, like just take your time. Don't focus at the future, focus in the now and practice what you're bad at. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to practice deliberate, deliberately, uh, just like, let's say uh, I'm starting this illustration. Uh, start first with a sketch, draw it as good as you can, get an idea first, okay? And then start researching. Like I might try to find anatomy reference for someone kneeling down like this, or I might look at photos with uh, watches, like pocket watches to better understand the shape of the arm and all this stuff. You know, uh, flowers I have here, so I would maybe try to find some cool flowers and mm -hmm. draw a few of them to better understand the design of a flower. And uh, that's practice with a purpose. Like I'm going to use that to make this illustration even better, you know, because mm -hmm. right now it's just like uh, imagination stuff right now. It's like autopilot. Mm -hmm. Um. Alex, uh, we have another question, which is, yeah, who is the person you look up to and the person that influenced you outside of art? Uh, outside of art? Yeah, can be anyone you want, you respect or affected you in a way. Because right now, no one pops into my head. <laughs> and I'm mm. sure there are people that uh, mm. I really appreciate. We can go to uh, Elliot's question. Ah, well, maybe like one of the early ones, at least, it was uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. Those are two of my favorite guys, too. <laughs> yeah, they're good to motivate you to do Especially stuff. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I, I got his biography on Audible. I oh, listened yeah. to it over a couple of times. I'm like, half, I'm like halfway through his, his biography. Yeah, well, you, you got the good part because, like, after the first half, he starts talking about the politics stuff, which is still inspirational and mm. stuff, but not my cup of tea, so I don't really care anymore. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It was, like, good to hear how he would approach things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, w what surprised me about uh, about Schwarzenegger is how entrepreneurial he is. Yeah. Like, like he got started in real estate. He made these businesses with his bodybuilder friends and took opportunity with uh, like the earthquake that damaged a bunch of buildings and just yeah. any opportunity that he spotted or thought might be fun. He just jumped on it. It's really yeah. inspiring. <clears throat> Funny. Yeah. It's a very, like one of the few inspirational people out there right now. Cause like it, he seems like he's not greedy. Mm hmm. You know, he seems like he really has pleasure and he really tries to help. Mm -hmm. um, um, other than that, I don't know. There are many people that either friends that inspire me or like, people that I see online or like mm -hmm. actors, musicians. Family members? Uh, with family members, I don't know. Like... I, I appreciate qualities in them, but I don't feel like I can say like, okay, they inspired me to do this. Or... Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, move on to Elliot's question. Finally. Um, he says, Hey Alex, can you tell us what it's like to work in house at an outsourced studio? How does that compare to working freelance remotely? Uh, be prepared to switch your style every <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Cause like today you're working on uh war scene and then you're gonna create like maybe some cute bears for a commercial then like maybe some uh, i don't know flowers as a background for a video game mm -hmm. so it can be anything it's a uh, every day at the job it's like a wild card <laughs> so does it kind of still feel like freelance in a way <clears throat> with project variety uh, no because that freelance you I mean, I, I can s still say no, that I don't want to do some mm. project that comes on my hand at work. But that doesn't really happen because uh, the people that I work with kind of know me. So they, they want to sign me like something that they never seen me draw before or, you know, 
they still target me with the project, you know, <laughs> bullying you. Uh, mm. But yeah, with freelance, if I don't want to work on something, I just say no, <clears throat> and it, it doesn't happen. No one gets hurt. No. But here is like uh, your no has a it's double edged. Like you can only say it like so many times before it's like, hey, do you still want to work here? I guess because like you've been saying no a lot of times lately. What's happening? Like. Mm. So yeah, like uh, that's the main difference. And yeah, you never choose your projects. They kind of come to you. Mm. But um, how's the, in the past three years? I, I've been working with the same client, so it's like I, I'm always like uh, I'm employed in house at this company that works with Volta, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for me, it wasn't that bad, like uh, style-wise, to change and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how's how's the pace like? How does that differ? I think it's faster because like outsourcing companies, uh, I feel like they they are like mercenaries. They just like uh, get a client and they promise that they're gonna do it fast or even faster. Mm. Because, like, clients don't want to pay for a lot of times, and that that's it. It's, like, all that, because the client is sometimes uh, cheaper, <laughs> he wants you to do something even faster. So, it's, like, sometimes you have, like, maybe a day or half a day to do something that would take you three days. So, mm. then they might uh, squeeze two or three people working on the same project, like... One of them is doing the background, the other one the character, and uh, another guy will merge everything together and... You know, it, mm-hmm. it's a possibility of a of, of this thing happening if you're in an outsourcing. It, it's not happening uh, like often, but yeah, it might be like that. Mm-hmm. Or like if you're not performing well on the project, they assign you, let's say, on a hard illustration thing and uh, you didn't do a good job. They might take that from you and assign it to another artist to continue your thing. So. Um, Mm. that's like up to you. Like if you're attached to your drawings and you really want to finish everything, that might be a problem for you as an artist, because then like you have to share credit with the other person Mm -hmm. or maybe the other person doesn't want to post the stuff anymore. So you're like, okay, it belongs to no one. Mm. Stuff like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the guy who asked the question is one of my was one of my classmates in FZD. He's been working for a couple of years, and I think he's kind of just wondering about the differences between freelance because I think he's a full time freelance, <clears throat> and he's kind of curious about outsourcing studios specifically. I believe because versus like you know yeah. like a triple A or something, which I, I don't know. Uh, Have you ever worked in a in, in an outs- Just one more thing. Oh yeah, in an outsourcing studio like. Um... There's no uh, really bon- bonus at the end of the project because you work on so many projects. Yeah. They may offer you a, like a yearly bonus, mm. but it can't compare to, let's say you worked on uh, GTA 5 or something mm-hmm. and the game is out and it's a success. Like all those leads and uh, art directors will receive a percentage bonus. Mm. And for a game like uh, GTA 5, I think it's in the order of a million dollars or something like that, you know, because like they sell so much. It's like, it's crazy. And uh, like as an outsourcer, like if you work for these companies, you you won't be in the loop for that bonus. So that's kind of, that kind of sucks, you know, you know. Yeah. 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 Mm. Rest in peace, Fallout 76. (laughs) Yeah, I, I've been hearing that that game <laughs> has big problems. They yeah, they promised Ellie a says lot rough. and they released so little and they fucked up with the pre-orders, with the bags, and then they leaked everyone's uh, names <laughs> when, and their credit card information. I was like, what the... Oh, it's re- oh. crazy. You saw the Internet <laughs> Historians video then. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what an amazing <laughs> channel. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, from from that channel, my favorite uh, internet historian video is the one with the furry convention. 
<laughs> was that the one with the hotel that they raised like twenty thousand yeah. dollars for? Yeah. yeah. They destroyed everything. They threw diapers on cars, and they had a pool. And oh my oh. god. Yeah. That's crazy. Ridiculous. I don't understand people sometimes, and they they act like worse than kids, man. Because kids <laughs> are just mean, but they yeah. don't want to be mean. You know, like... uh, they're like animals, but animals are just uh, I don't even know. Yeah. So um. Uh, does anybody if anybody has questions like now is your chance just slap them up in the uh in the twitch and we will will ask away he's an open book right now i guess yeah. i got uh i got a couple more uh questions uh, i got a question that i really like asking people do you consider this a risky career and do you consider yourself a risk taker yeah, risky career. Hmm. So far, in from my experience, it's not very risky if you're doing your job. Mm. It's like you're never going to run out of jobs. Mm. Of course, there might be a studio closing in because like, they mismanage their, their projects or whatever. But I think if you're good enough and your portfolio is like uh, up there, like, you shouldn't worry about the next day because like mm -hmm. people consume art on a daily basis and we're still like uh, for example at volta we're mostly uh, immigrants and that's kind of shows like how few artists are in this area of canada that i mean they could hire canadians but they don't have like enough canadian artists to hire so that's why the there are so many immigrants at this company. Mm. Like, um, and if I consider myself a risk taker, uh, depends on the situation. Like, uh, yeah, like over overall, yes, I I kind of chase opportunities, but um, yeah, I I don't know. It's it's a bit vague. So mm. yeah, no worries. I don't know how to explain it, if I'm really a risk taker or not. Mm -hmm. So, say, um, like, say you're, say you're 20 years old, you're 18, or, you know, yeah. even like 25 or 26 or 27. Like, <clears throat> if you've never really drawn, and you're thinking about getting into the industry, do you? think that is something that people could absolutely do or would that come with some warnings from you or like what are your what are your opinions on that say you're giving advice to a i don't know a 25 year old who's never really drawn before who wants to get into the industry like what would you kind of tell them um a few years ago i would tell everyone they, they can do it but now it's like i'm not so sure anymore you know why is depends that? on how dedicated they are. Because, mm. like, yeah, like some people might want to switch careers, but they don't have time to build a portfolio. They don't have time to increase their skill. So, mm. you think and they also, could increase their skill? They just you don't know if they're dedicated enough. Yeah, like you really need to be like in that warrior mode and chase your dream, like really really chase it you know because it won't happen otherwise mm -hmm. i i even in my case like uh i had a few lucky strikes you know uh when i told you about my friend that went to to this design college that was strike number one mm -hmm. <laughs> then uh at some point i won uh, this um, trojan horse unicorn uh, illustration contest for the first edition and then i went to to troya and that was also career changing i met so many people and uh, so it's like in a way uh, lucky but also i was hard working you know mm. the only thing you can do is be hard working and hope that you're gonna be a bit lucky too you know mm -hmm. so you think that you know you basically like 
if you work hard uh, occasionally you'll you get lucky but you, don't you can't market count yourself on it. you're shooting yourself in the foot for example mm -hmm. uh you have to be also hard working and also create your own opportunities mm -hmm. those uh, opportunities for luck you know yeah well i've heard before uh, that luck is when preparedness meets opportunity <laughs> It sounds familiar. <laughs> I don't know where I heard that from. I just, I just liked it though. It was, it was Einstein, man. It was? <laughs> it was Albert Einstein. Dude, he has a That's lot cool. of good quotes. <laughs> he also said that simplicity is genius. <clears throat> uh, we so have yeah, like, I cannot promise anymore to anyone because I feel like I'm cheating them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. Assess your life and like see what you can uh, do with it. Like yeah, so you'd say yes, but you have to be very dedicated. Yeah, and not even then. That's the thing. Is like, give yourself a time where you you just go hardcore in it. Like let's say, I'm gonna try a year to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, goodbye. You know. <laughs> but in that year, give your one hundred percent. You know, like no excuses. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm -hmm. Just go for the kill. So what about if they spend a year doing it and they see that they've improved a lot, but they're not quite there yet? Would you say keep going if you still want to do it? If they still want to do it, yes. Okay. But if they don't and if if they if they already feel that they're losing and uh, then like I think that's the worst part because like if you feel like you're losing, you're already seeing yourself losing, you know, okay. just like either be that guy that's super crazy and always believes in his dream mm -hmm. even though he has no chances because like you you don't i feel like you don't need to keep that loser mentality like forget about that you know be like naruto <laughs> we'll yeah, be like, Kage someday i haven't watched that anyway but yeah be like naruto <laughs> probably you know what you're talking about well i yeah. think that's why it resonates with so many people that show is because a lot of people feel like that you know they're like well i have this dream and nobody believes in me but i'm gonna do it anyways and work towards it yeah <laughs> just go for the kill man <laughs> it's like you, you only have one life and if you feel like this is something that you were meant to do just do it mm -hmm. and in the end uh, like, don't do it for the money, do it for yourself. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, some people are, like, rock stars and will get, like, a lot of money from art. But most of us, they we just make regular cash that allows us to live from day to day. Mm -hmm. And um, in a way, I, I do this because I, I still like it and I still find it worthy, you know. Mm -hmm. We have another question. Uh, Austin sure. says, getting to work with so many projects, about how long do you get to spend with each of them? <clears throat> uh, well, on this, like, when I arrived in Volt, I worked on many projects, like in the first few months. And then my first, first big AAA game was uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Mm -hmm. And I've been on that for like a year and a half maybe, or a year. And then uh, my second AAA game was there, and I've been on that ever since. So um, it's like, it depends on how much the client wants to work with you, I guess. Um, it can last for like w one hour till like years. <laughs> That's you pretty, know? pretty big. It, it depends cool. what the client wants, like, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, for, for these AAA games, there's a lot of design going on. So you need to do many, 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 many things. Like I've been doing creature design, character design, environment art, prop art, uh, all this stuff. And yeah, it's like it, 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 at this point it's still going. Even though, though the game is out already and like it's it's still going so, and that's kind of crazy and I don't know when I'm gonna be off this project and in a way it's like it, it's a bit scary because like I don't know what the future holds for me because like 
now I, I kind of grew comfortable with this, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll have to spend the next three years drawing bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, no. no. I think um, there's going to be VR, there's going to be plenty of new stuff coming out, man. I don't think you'll be bored. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you will be very to try VR yet. The, uh, like it's something that really something. interests me, but I, I never tried it. Uh, Colson was t telling me about it. What's like that? VR? Kit. Yeah, the VR oh, kit. Dude, you need to. You'll love it because it's new and it's interesting. Yeah, like last year I, I, I finally upgraded my work laptop. Like I've been using that laptop for like six, seven years. And now I got the beast of computer, like it's a desktop. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Probably the next time I'm going to buy something computer related is going to be a VR kit. Well, the new Oculus S, I don't remember, came out with the onboard cameras, so you don't need these stupid sensors anymore. Oh, that's super cool. <laughs> it's so much better. Uh, when, uh, uh, my One of my buddies got one, and he's just like, yeah, <laughs> I want to get one now. <laughs> so uh, we Yeah, when I was a freelancer, I was definitely making more money, uh, mm. and I was to buy a lot of stuff like everything was <laughs> the the latest thing i would buy it <laughs> now it's like i have to be more calculated because like that's a big difference like with freelance i like the best my best month was like 10k in a month and i didn't even work that full month it was like mm -hmm. crazy and now it's like now nah, it's like no matter how much work i do it's the same uh, i get paid the same amount mm -hmm. So, this, is this a new drawing? That kind of sucks in a way. Or was that the whole drawing? Yeah, that was the whole drawing. Like, okay. I kind of stopped there. Awesome. Uh, after we do the stream, can you send us that drawing and we could use it as the thumbnail? For, oh, yeah. Uh, like an Instagram post or something? You don't need to right now, but... I can play another video. Oh, yeah, sure. Not. From the beginning. It's like something that I started a long time ago. I never finished it. Okay. Uh, we have another question. And actually, this can kind of um uh go into go into a little bit more detail too i can expand upon it it says how would you approach when art isn't always enjoyable what ways do you make it fun like if you know you really like art but sometimes you just hey, you just don't like it like what do you do like do you stop drawing do you power through uh i don't know maybe looking at inspiration uh, for example, let me pop out, like I have somewhere here. Uh, fuck, I, I wish I had the second screen because I, I, I'm not sure what is going to pop up. I <laughs> like can, what uh, folders I have. I can uh, just anyway, I have a Pinterest and I collected a lot of uh, images that inspire me. Mm. And most of the times if I look at those, my inspiration comes back like... Uh, Maybe I want to do something along the lines of a certain artist, or um, that—that's how I would uh, m motivate myself. Because like, all you need is an idea, and when you have that idea, it's like the drawing is almost done. Because like, that's the hardest part—the idea. Mm -hmm. Then it's just like dancing around that idea and trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. what what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I guess there's just been a there's gonna been a couple people recently who I I've been trying to figure out what to say to, who kind of I, I think they have this mentality of well if I'm not enjoying art at every moment then I'm gonna refuse to draw because it should be it should always be enjoyable yeah and i know that's yeah. not how it is but i don't know how to it's explain like, it it's like art is life basically it's like it's, sometimes it's gonna be super beautiful and sometimes it's gonna suck so mm -hmm. just carry on living the moment mm -hmm. would you do you think that you're <laughs> in at those times where you're struggling and not feeling like you're making any progress if you power through them do you feel that you actually grow a lot as an artist mm, i think so yeah you basically what you're doing if you're powering through something you're uh, leaving the door open for that opportunity when the 
the right idea pops into your head. Mm. Uh, if you close that door by stopping drawing completely and like, it's logical that you won't get that opportunity. <clears throat> like, like each moment that you spend your uh, sketchbook or uh, like opening a canvas or something, you, you're starting to create that opportunity for yourself to, to make something that maybe it's career changing for you. Because you never know what you're gonna draw the next day. Like for me, it's like, yeah, I kind of control what I'm drawing, but I, like, in the beginning of the year, I don't know all the drawings that I will do. They're mm -hmm. like as unknown to me as they are to everyone else. Like they're not there. They're, they they haven't been manifested into existence. You know, mm -hmm. I am the one that sits down and creates them. But that. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, is like, just sit down and no matter how you feel, try to draw something. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do. Um, with the uh, people who say, oh, well, if it's not 100% fun, fun, fun all the time for me, I would suggest them just, how about change the thought of, you know, thought process, like, don't think of it like, oh, it needs to be fun drawing. How about you have fun achieving something rather than looking for fun fun you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah because Fine. because sometimes right sometimes at least for me like i don't sometimes i make a drawing and i hate it mm -hmm. okay i really hate it but then I, I look back and go well at least i did something i've never done before and you know try to figure out something else as a way of looking into it from a, from the bright side, mm -hmm. and yeah. after that, I go, hey, um, at least I did something I've not even like, even I, I did something for a client that I wouldn't do it myself, for example, right, or something mm -hmm. like that. And then I go, well, next time when I do it for me, I'll do it better. So it wasn't a waste. So I'm happy. While yeah. I was doing it, I fucking hated it. You know, I hated it. I had to learn this program, do this much. I had sleepless nights. I hated it. But now I'm happy because at least I did something that I couldn't thought was possible for me before I did it, right? Yeah, you so kind of, yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's about like, uh, f you know, tricking your mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's how I look at it sometimes. And I sometimes I do it deliberately to trick myself. Yeah. And it works. I think. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I hated it while I was doing it. But once it was done, I go, yeah, it's. Yeah, I did it. I did it. It's an achievement for me, even yeah. though I hated it. I muscled through it, right? Yeah. Well, you take pleasure in the fact that you did something, that you've accomplished something. Not even if that thing was miserable. You know, like nobody likes doing, you know, like exercise. But then you're you take pleasure in the fact that you're now healthier. It's like that sort of sense of accomplishment afterwards, even if the act of doing it, you were miserable during it. It's, you know, not all uncomfortable things are bad. And yeah. sometimes art's just uncomfortable and you got to mm. power through it or, and I, and I think a lot of it has to do with sometimes artists will have no sense of direction. Maybe like they want to make these amazing drawings, but they can't get them out of the head and they don't know how. And they're just like, well, I, now that I'm in this deep state of depression and can't make it out and this and that and honestly you got to go back to that fundamental grind you know you can't draw yeah. the, the house of your dreams if you don't know perspective yeah yeah <laughs> so true <laughs> so yeah i mean that's uh ev i can guarantee you everybody you see who you respect as an artist has some solid grasp of the fundamentals there is nobody out there who is high high caliber artist who doesn't know you know either their like anatomy their their perspective their design their use of reference composition because that's what makes a piece of art you can't make a good piece of art without it yeah the thing is that also like Fundamentals are boring to study, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you're fucking drawing boxes. <laughs> but they're only boring in the first 
one or two years because like after that you won't be thinking that i'm drawing boxes anymore it's like you're yeah. transforming them you're designing the boxes mm -hmm. it's just like you need to make your brain understand the principle of perspective the principle of anatomy and all the other basics and after that you you do whatever you want <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah, so it's gotta... not fun to learn the the alphabet but after you know the alphabet you can do so many things with it so you mm -hmm. can do poetry you can speak you can i mean you can speak without the alphabet but you can write <laughs> yeah no absolutely i uh, i don't know if you've read stephen king's on writing book no but he he talks about writing in a in a sense of he says he's pretty hardcore about his views on writing but he says he's like 99 percent of books you're going to read on writing are just are just garbage he's like all these books talking about this and that and this and that and then he's like there's one exception to this rule he's like that is a book called strunk and white's the elements of style and i bought the book because i was curious and i open it up and it's a fundamental book on sentence structure and how to how to make your put your nouns into sentences how to use past tenses and this and that and Basically, what he talks about writing is you write and then you edit and you revise. And when he was trying to break into the industry of becoming a writer, the best, some of the best advice that he ever got was feedback from a, I guess I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but feedback that he got from a, like a publisher and it said something like minus 25% and resubmit. And the guy was basically telling him declutter, don't put anything, don't put any nonsense in there that isn't going to contribute to the story that you're trying to tell. And, yeah. and Stephen King is very, very, I mean, if you've ever read any of his books, like he makes bestsellers out of, out of dancing zombies. Like it's ridiculous. His books are so bizarre, so weird. Like, yeah. and, but his storytelling is amazing. And he just constantly goes on and on about the like these fundamentals, like learn how he was actually an English teacher for a while uh, when he was breaking into the uh, into the industry. And he just over and over, he'll talk about like the fundamentals of writing, the fundamentals of writing, like these principles that you'll learn about, you know, only like don't any there was there's like stuff he talks about that's like. I don't remember what he calls it, but it's like filler stuff. He's like, be deliberate about what you want to say. And he, he's like, the, he's like, John went to the store, not like a different way of saying it. Like, cause a lot of writers when they're trying to break in will be, he, yeah. he, I think he calls it timid writing. Yeah. But I, I feel like art in, in the, is, is a lot of the same way. I think that people think art is something but then when they really start getting better at it, it's like when they start getting better at it, they realize that it's really only this certain set of fundamentals practiced over and over and over and refined. Yep. So I know Stephen King, like um, he tried for a long time to become oh, yeah. a writer and he was ready to quit. He said, fuck it. And yeah. his wife told him, just do this one more uh, book, and if it's not going to happen, then you can quit. Mm -hmm. And that is the last thing that he tried to publish, like, was actually his first published thing. So Yeah. What was that book again? I, I don't remember the name of it. It was, but, that, it was that girl who had, like, superpowers and, like, killed all those uh, people in the school or something. Yeah, I, I don't remember. It's... Anyway. Carrie. Car yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Uh, she um, also asked a question. So there you go. It's like you never know when you're going to have that luck mm -hmm. element. I mean, maybe he was lucky. Maybe he was good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you'll never know. But mm -hmm. well, he certainly left good that now. door open for opportunity. Yeah. To his wife. Because <laughs> otherwise... He wouldn't have gotten where he wanted to to be, mm -hmm. and for every person is different, and that's the the fucked up thing. Is like you, you don't know when it's gonna happen for you. All you have to do is to 
be hopeful that it's going to happen one day. Mm-hmm. Until that day, give give your best. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a question. Uh, when it comes to developing skills, would it be best to do fundamentals before design or vice versa? Or would approaching both be more effective? I think if I'm going to kind of answer this a little bit, fundamental design is one of the fundamentals. Yeah. Like doing studies, understanding the world, you know, like you can learn perspective drawing a whole bunch of old vehicles and you're practicing design and perspective at the same time because you're studying the world. Um, I don't think that design is separate than the fundamentals. It's just one of them. What are your, um, what are your thoughts? In my uh, opinion, is like sometimes you need to have the fundamentals before you start something if you want to be efficient. Mm-hmm. Like at my job, I don't sketch first and then research reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the opposite. It's like I, like uh, I, I already. St- no, wait. Let's put it different. Like uh, when I want to be efficient, I'm, I'm going for the kill and I'm using my fundamental knowledge. I might not have reference, you know. It's like mm-hmm. uh, that's what I'm trying to say. But at home, where time doesn't really matter when I'm sketching for myself. Mm-hmm. It's like I might start with a sketch and then look for reference. And after I establish the the idea that I want to do, you know, mm-hmm. the cool part at my job is, is that the, they already lock me in into this idea. So I might have uh, enough knowledge to, to do it from imagination because I have good fundamentals, you know, mm-hmm. and that's it. Okay. What about from like a like a student point of view? If you're just learning, hmm. I would say to practice these two ways of thinking. Sometimes start with a sketch, so you allow yourself to practice your imagination, uh, drawing skills. Because mm-hmm. I I know many good artists that have their fundamentals and they're very good at studying and stuff but when it comes to original stuff they cannot create anything it's like i don't know what to draw if i don't have reference or Mm -hmm. like they have that fear of drawing without any purpose so it's like that's kind of stupid in a way because i sometimes you need to be abstract Mm -hmm. so yeah so that would be my two cents on this yeah burin yeah what do you what do you think about this? Because I know you're like a kind of the hardcore history history guy who's who's all about you know perspective and this and that. So I, I'd like to hear your opinion on this too. Yeah, it's like I mentioned previously. Just yeah, like if I'm if I'm bad at like perspective, let's just do perspective, right? I don't care yeah. if I'm gonna learn it from drawing a house or drawing a room, whatever just get the perspective correctly right mm-hmm. and once that's done once you really get it in your hand now you can go oh yeah now i don't have to worry about perspective anymore and once once you're good with that again you you move on to oh yeah now my lighting sucks why because i don't understand how lights bounce off certain surfaces and all that mm-hmm. and then since you already got your perspective ready you can just do only light studies right mm-hmm. and now even okay fine while you're doing light studies, you don't need to worry about your perspective. That's fine. That can be ignored because if you try, you can do your perspective. Mm-hmm. And then now you have two skills down. And now put them all together and draw, like, I don't know, whatever, right? Room, let's say, with lots of lamps in them. Mm-hmm. And then you got that down. And then once once you got those out of your head, now you'd notice that, oh, yeah, my, my design really sucks. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to draw a chair. Oh, I don't know. Like, I know nothing about ergonomics, about how human inhabit, like habitation works or whatever. So it kind of builds up. But unless you, until you solve the most fundamental knowledge problems, you will not notice the other mistakes you're making. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. it can eclipse it. So that's why, for example, like when you're working in-house, right? Sometimes it happens to me. I, I, I totally give them one drawing and they go, Oh yeah, Buren, this part doesn't look right. Your light should not be like this. Or, 
whatever. And then I go, okay, cool. Yeah, nice. And then I go and fix that problem exactly how they said it. And they bring it back. They go, oh, yeah, Buren. Uh, now that you fixed that problem, no, I can see this problem. And then I go, shit. Okay, what else? And they go, uh, I don't know. Why don't you fix that as well and come back? So sometimes it can take like four, five, six back and forth, you know, until they finally go, okay, good. You fixed that. You fixed this. So you made the demand done, all that. Now you can move on to the next one. So yeah, fundamentals is important, but how you approach fixing that is also important, I would say. Mm. Drawing is problem solving. Wasn't yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, just be as detached as possible to what you're doing because, look, if, again, I always say, like, if you did it wrong, it's not your fault. You didn't know. That's it. Like, it's not because you suck, you know? It doesn't mean you suck. It's just you didn't know. If you knew, you would. That's it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody tells you, thank him because that's how you learn something. It's not... It's not in you, you know, you collect knowledge, mm -hmm. you collect experience, right? So yeah, like, uh, like I would say, like, especially if you work in house or with clients, and especially if you're not good with what you're doing, you totally need to be open with, uh, what is your problem and what and you need to be able to recognize and ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. If they say, oh, it sucks. Then you go, oh man, I, I said, no, you just go, okay, why do you think it sucks? What's wrong with it? Why do you feel like that? Oh, did I make the culture wrong? Okay, cool, right? And you also need to understand who you're asking from as well. Because if you ask, like, I don't know, let's say a historian, he'll only focus on the history stuff. He wouldn't tell you the fundamental problem with perspective or lighting. It's like what I said, like when I had the ego, my friends would tell me, Buren, your painting is weird. I can't put my hands on it, right? I can't put my finger on what it is, right? So if you ask, I don't know, some fashion designer, then he will say, oh, yeah, man, your T-shirt is a little too, I don't know, low cut or something, right? But then if you ask the uh, fashion guy, whatever, about, yeah, what do you think about the architecture? I'm not saying that fashion designers don't know architecture or whatever. I'm just saying, depending on who you ask, you will totally uh, notice. I mean, they will totally tell you what is wrong only from their perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Again, like if you ask a guy who sets up like, I don't know, like live, like interior design, he will probably say, hey, uh, your bed is not too wide. The knees are that tall. That's why your bed is a little too high for someone to sit on, et cetera, et cetera. So just, yeah, just don't feel like your ego is being crushed. Just keep going, I would say. Sorry, mm -hmm. Alex, I totally hijacked your time. Ah, no worries, man. <laughs> but it makes sense. I kind of switched the drawing because the other one was too dark and it wasn't going really anywhere. Everyone forgot that they created that one. So it's like, it's just a girl in the forest. So on that one, it's one of those drawings that kind of suck. Alex, <laughs> can we post the drawings you made on this session on our Discord channel? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hmm. Um, tell us a little I'll bit see. about this monkey. Oh, wait, wait, what were you saying? Uh, no, I was going to say that, yeah, I'll send them to you. Oh, okay. The stream. Um, Tell us about this character. This is your this is your little little monkey dude, right? Yeah. Uh, so the monkey name is Tika. It comes from my Mutika, which in Romanian means uh, little monkey. Mm. So <clears throat> it doesn't come from the Zika virus. <laughs> <I'll hope so. laughs> um, anyway, I, so me and my wife have a lot of uh, like plush toys, and mm. I mean. This is one of her plush toys when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't look like this. It was like a much rounder and um... anyway, it's like over the years we started uh, imagining uh, that the toys talk to each other. It's like a toy story thing. So we would make up random stories uh, like from time to time and at some point for some reason, I started uh, drawing this monkey how I was imagining it. And um, the character of this monkey is very like uh, impulsive. Uh, like uh, she she does a lot of things that uh, may be like <laughs> opportunity, like they look good, but she always ends up bad. So <laughs> <laughs> good intentions. Yeah, good intention, but always unlucky and stuff like that. So, 
at some point I started drawing like this monkey in different styles. So mm. I, I do like realistic and then like um, cartoony and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. the, the, it was at some time where I wasn't really drawing anymore at home. Like the most I, I would do would be like just a, a quick sketch and then I would be like, fuck it, I hate drawing. Like it was <laughs> in my, when I, I was like, almost sure that I'm never gonna draw again. <laughs> so this kind of like small project kind of ma made it fun for me to draw again. Uh, and this drawing that you're seeing right now, like I sped it up, but it's like um, for the boyfriend of my wife's sister, mm -hmm. his name is Robert. So I was like making a happy birthday present for him. Mm -hmm. Like he likes sports, so I drew Tsika as a surf uh, monkey. What's the uh, gender of this monkey? Uh, well, for most of the times, it's a girl, but it switches genders. So it's like a modern character, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, uh, design too. Yeah, so I was thinking that the, like I was trying to integrate uh, his name in the, like. Uh, the boyfriend's name in the thing so i was trying to figure out like uh, fake names and stuff, or like this robbie bubble thing it's like a champagne for kids in romania so champagne he's not a kid anymore and this was like me making fun of him like uh like that's funny this is the only thing you drink and his uh family name is called with me which means uh um, like a sharp tooth so later on, I'm gonna design like a, like on the suit, like a logo representing that. So I was trying to integrate as much as I can. <laughs> and yeah, like with this uh, project, I started drawing more for myself, and I, I noticed how fun it, it kind of brought back memories and like how much fun I had when I started, you know? Yeah. Because I, I, all of a sudden, I was doing something that that. I actually cared about you know because mm -hmm. with with jobs you start at some point to feel like okay like drawing has no value anymore mm -hmm. yeah I, I absolutely get that feeling sometimes like the drawing that i'm doing i'm just like pfft, like you, you become almost too detached from your work to the point where you don't even care yeah yeah, yeah. that happens to me so i feel like doing so, personal work is is really important so for these drawings, it's like I keep them loose. It's like I, they never go into like a, more than like a few hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're they're the fun, most fun to me to do. Mm -hmm. um, you you mentioned that you don't really draw this character anymore. No, I, I draw the character, but I don't post anymore. Oh, okay, man. I'd love it's to see just... more of it. I love that. I love the character. <laughs> Thank you. Are you um, have you have you seen uh, the Cartoon Network cartoon where uh, cow and chicken? Oh yeah, of course. It was my Do you know the red guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Does this uh, monkey character gonna be like red guy? There's we people don't wouldn't know if there's gonna be many of them or just one of them doing many. <laughs> but then suddenly oh, sometimes three of them show up in the same scene. Uh, well, in this case, it's just one. Okay. Uh, there was a point where I drew some uh, some of the other characters from the world, and even with this character, like I keep on changing the design. Like, uh, like initially the the first sketches that I posted online. Uh, thank God that I posted those and not the first ones that I ever did, because like the first ones that, that I ever did was like horror shit, man. Like, <laughs> I was like surprised uh, that how bad they were when I look back <laughs> at them. But I'm going to show you them like in, in just a second. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was saying that, yeah, I started developing also the other characters from the town where this monkey is living. Like th there is a lot of lore in, in, in my head for this, but mm. I don't know when I'm ready to publish anything. So mm -hmm. It'd be maybe cool if you... in like five years or something when it's going to be cool and done. <laughs> Maybe you could release like a sketch collection or something of a whole bunch of. Because what I've noticed is that people really like, you know, not not necessarily, I guess, consistency, but more 
like a like storytelling you know like oh the character's here and now he's there and now he's there and now he's there and people are like trying to connect the dots and figure things out yeah i really it, it seems like a really interesting character to me like could uh, definitely yeah i even did it in 3d at some point <laughs> that's cool i never posted that either so are you maybe... gonna are you gonna voice it uh no okay. i mean well in my mind i i think like it's it has voice but um i don't know man like it's a bit too early too tricky and too early mm. so no not here oh that spaceman that you did was awesome oh thank you so this is like a, like one hour modeling in blender doing some shadows and stuff some stuff and it, i did a character in 3d and this was a sculpt that i did like in zbrush and then i painted over some expressions mm. so i keep on trying different things for this but mm -hmm. yeah i don't know where it's going and uh, project wise it's like there we go i have this tumblr where it's not updated or anything, but I have some drawings, most of the drawings that oh, I post. Yeah. Are here. So this is what I mean when having fun with this character. I drew it as an <laughs> embryo. Oh my God. <laughs> so That's it's like- great. 10 millimeters. Yeah, it's like, I, I just went crazy. Like, this is like Tim Burton style, like Tika. Um, I imagine like, you know, the band Arctic Monkeys, so. Mm. Like as a monkey, so I imagine like she would be the cover on one of their albums. Um, I like. Oh, that and these these were the first sketches. Like uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, like this is what I need. Like when, when I'm starting something, it really looks weird. So it had a speedo in the beginning. So <laughs> like very very weird. And yeah. is it a specific uh, <laughs> breed of monkey? Sorry? Is it a specific breed of monkey? No. No. So this is how I would draw it in the beginning with a super long uh, Oh, stump. okay. Mm. <laughs> well, you did a lot of artwork for this. Yeah, it was like, I really had fun in the beginning. <clears throat> Pikachu. Oh, no. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. <laughs> Man, this Tumblr works like shit. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite is the alien one. Oh, that's cool. And that's kind of it with this thing. It's like it's. Oh, there's that ongoing. I don't know where, when it's gonna stop. How it's gonna stop? If it's gonna stop? I think. Uh, I started as a challenge on Inktober, like oh. a few years ago with it. And these were like what I would post. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, around this time when I started posting, oh, I even tried an animation here. It's like this Pokemon <laughs> wild seeker appeared and then you try to catch it. But if you hit like, <laughs> it's going to be super effective. <laughs> That's funny. But as a joke, it's She's level 100, so it's super effective, but it only dents a bit. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and here are the some of the other characters that I imagined. Oh, that's awesome. Like, this is the Trump John inspired Lemon. player. <laughs> John Lemon, yeah. Um, I oh, don't know. That's... And Patrick is like the, the building manager here. So <laughs> I just like wanted to make a monkey like, inspired oh. by him. Uh, awesome this is supposed to be comic. Ethan Klein from H3H3. Oh, oh Ethan. I watch H3H3 a lot. My <laughs> brother does too. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, I put a spin on different characters. Oh, you should do Humongous. Oh, yeah. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hila. Um, oh, that's super funny. It's really cool, man. Man, I would love to see a webcomic in that style. Oh, thank you. Like, I, I've been trying, but it, it takes a lot of time. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so... Let's see. 
and uh, there was a time where where I was Twitch streaming, and mm-hmm. I did a bunch of characters live. But man, it was like so tiring. So oh. I still have the videos. Like I'm gonna post them one day. So. Oh sweet. Yeah, I I, I yeah. noticed that you you used to do a whole lot of re- like really you, you were all focused on the rendering, and nowadays yeah. I think you're more focused on other aspects. I mean, you still render like really well. But I think a lot of the time you're, like you said, you're exploring and just kind of trying to discover new stuff. Yeah, because I know like if I have the line art, I can render it at this level, you know. Yeah. Just just take, takes time. It doesn't like it's not very like difficult. Intellect challenging, you know. Mm-hmm. But to come up with a design, it's much harder for me. I love that one. The guns. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. The suit, the shape language to it, the the forms. Man, it took me so long to complete these drawings. So cool, yeah. man! That one's like, I think that one really. You should render that one out, or or like roughly, maybe. I don't know. It probably take a long uh, time. It, it was bought by a company, and they're gonna. Oh really? Finish it, yeah. That's awesome. So someone, maybe so you got contacted. Our video. Oh cool! Elliot's gonna love this. <laughs> he likes it. Yeah, face. like one day I'm gonna release these videos, but at this point, it's like <laughs> I I don't plan to do that. Mm. But just the the loading mechanism, like I drew like the bullets, like let, let me find that area because like I feel that's more what's more interesting. How to plan intricate details. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is like. I'm I'm trying to break out the thing in basic shapes first mm-hmm. with cube cylinders and all that basic stuff and after mm-hmm. that I do the design so um, Oh those bullets are really cool. The belt. Yeah. That's Yeah, but it took me so long. Like in three D, like I hate three D how easy it is to do this, you know, like and in drawing you have to actually spend a lot of time drawing it. Yeah, but there's something about drawing it that, like, someone who who knows you know like properly like perspective and value and all that. There's something that's so refreshing about seeing it drawn. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, that's cool. Well, somewhere around here, I I guess I start drawing. And sometimes you, uh... I'm planning the the silhouette first, and then I draw the lines. Because mm-hmm. like sometimes I need to see the silhouette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that boring? No, like uh, you know, digital painting as such. You guys talked about just mentioned three D. It would be easier, but there's something novel about really drawing it, right? Yeah. Have you, Alex? Have you met? an artist from an older generation like if you say you're an artist they go well what do you do what do you draw you say oh i use digital painting and do they have you ever met an artist that just scoffs at you like that's nothing like you hit control alt enter and the just painting comes out like i don't remember to be honest like i I don't think so Mm. I, i i have run into older artists like that like like you know like hardcore oil painters from I don't know in their forties and fifties. Yeah, and I but just tell them, yeah, like, I'm a digital painter, and they go like, "Computer, that's nothing. Like, not your drawing is not cool. unique, and all that." You know? I think I met a few teachers that were kind of like this. Mm. Mm. I think they're just angry old people. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my, my 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 best argument to those people is this, right? They say, I "Ask them, why do you hate it?" They said, "Because it's not unique." Like, what do you mean? Like, you can print it a million times. Like, there is no original copy. And then I go, oh, okay, fine. Uh, have you seen Mona Lisa? They go, yeah. Did you actually go to Italy, wherever you were up, and seen it with your own eyes? They say, no. And they go, yeah. You, you saw it on a history book or an art book or in a documentary, did you? They go, yeah. And they go, see? You saw a print. That's how you yeah. know it. And they go, no, but there's still that one copy out there. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my argument against those guys. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, just in school, I met people that were kind of against digital, and now it's like too late for them. But <laughs> that's not my job. To, like, this will happen to us too. Like, I don't know what's going to be the next thing, but I'm pretty sure that <laughs> after doing this for like 20, 30 years, we're going to be stuck in a way of thinking. And then a kid that's like 15, 16 is going to do the next best thing because kids have all the time in the world and they. <laughs> And we'll be like that, and I mean, hopefully we won't be like that, you know, like we will be open for change. Like just in this industry, like uh, I remember when it used to be taboo to photo bash and all this stuff. And now it's like, if you don't photo bash, you're not in the industry anymore. Cause like you cannot compete anymore. You're not valuable to a studio, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to work in the studio and you want to do your own stuff, it's you can work however you want. But I'm just saying, in a, in a studio, like sometimes you need to adapt. It's either you're super good at drawing and you don't need to photo bash, but like I'm not really that good mm -hmm. sometimes. If <laughs> I, I can just draw from imagination, you know. It's like like I'm I'm willing to use the methods of creating art. Uh, like uh, visual images that involve the so-called cheating ways, you know. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Maybe, I don't know how much time you have today. Maybe we can get wrapping it up soon. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess kind of the last thing I wanted to ask you was what are your just plans for the future? What are you interested in now? Where do you see yourself in you know, 10, 20 years plus, like, what are you, what do you want out of the next, you know, couple decades, you know, what do you want to do? If you get bored fast and easily, like, what are some of the, what are some of the things that you want to do? I want a lot of money and <laughs> power <laughs> and fame and power and <laughs> I want to rule the world. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm not thinking of that anymore. Like, uh, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Like, I'm going to give my best every day. And that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> like, I told you, I, I think I realized how much luck I had in the beginning. So it, I think it's all about the luck in the end. Like, all I can do is to be as good as I can be in the moment. And that's it, you know? Mm. And things are going to happen to me. Like, uh, yeah, of course, I might have a dream to work at a certain company or something, but I mean, I don't at the moment. It's like, I don't really care who I'm working for because I feel it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. As long as you're working for someone else, you're not working for yourself. <laughs> so do you um, want to work for yourself? Sorry? You want to work for yourself? Um, maybe. Oh. Like, <laughs> it would be cool to generate money somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, I guess, yeah, like a money printing machine would be cool to have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, like, you know, I'm going to try to explore as much as I can. Like, I, I'm very curious about things and mm -hmm. I don't know wh where this curiosity is going to lead me, but I'm super excited for it. So mm -hmm. that's it. It's like, I, I feel this, uh, like most of the people that you're going to talk with in this uh, channel, more or less, they're going to be the same. Like at, at one point, you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, answers that are kind of the same. And yeah, yeah, I think I think it's good for students who want to learn to hear all the professionals saying the same thing because it can give them a very clear idea. But at the same time. Yeah. I think it can get kind of boring for the people who run the channel because maybe, yeah, uh, like yeah, that, yeah. I think that's what I see happening. Like uh, I, since I'm around like two or three times, this kind of community has mm -hmm. risen up with like interviewing people, and at some point they they stop doing it because like there's no point in making this anymore. You know, yeah, it's very good that you're doing it, but yeah. But, no, I absolutely, I absolutely. What can you do after everything has been said? Like, just move on. <laughs> yeah, There's I no guess. I guess all you can really do it is. Yeah, that's I why guess... I said. What's that? I forgot if I said it on on the stream or not, but it's like I kind of hate 
a bit this kind of interviews because I, I'm always saying the same thing, you know, mm. like it never changes. And but I don't do it for myself. I do it for the, those people that um, like might need to hear this, you know, because yeah. like I was in that place too, you know, and a lot of uh, these professionals made me continue. Like when you're new to this, it's like very helpful. To yeah. Hear how to, yeah, you said it before the interview, and I totally understand that, you know, I feel like that's why, like, you know, the level up guys quit is because they're like, well, we basically interviewed everyone, and the people yeah. we didn't interview are going to say the same thing, and that, that's why I find stuff like, even like the Joe Rogan podcast to be so interesting, because he interviews so many different kinds of people. Yeah, that yeah, I love that podcast. And in fact, I, I even thought for the future, I, I guess this channel in a way is sort of like a, a test channel because I thought about doing interviews for just all kinds of people later on because you kind of get yeah. bored in the industry, in this industry. Like you heard everything, you know, and you want to explore new stuff. Yeah, and from what I understand, it's, I mean, yeah, it's hard because like you're going to talk to all people, all kind of people that uh, are like uh, different. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, the hardest thing would be to do the research. But yeah, it's like um, you as an interviewer has have to think at something that will bring something new to the table, you know? Yeah. Like open some eyes. That would be cool. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, asking good questions. Yeah. 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 No pressure, just ask a good, good, good question. You know? <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah, I, I found that yeah. we, me and Boring kind of came up with a standard set of questions for these interviews. And then we, we were kind of asking them, but, but depending on the guest, like with you, for example, I wanted to ask about, you know, coming from a, a country like Romania, how with, without a degree, how did you get to work somewhere like Canada? Well, I have a degree in design. But oh, okay. Oh, it's you do. Like, uh, huh? Sorry. Oh, I thought you didn't have a degree. Oh, I have. I finished uh, university. Oh, okay. But I finished it just so I can have that degree, so I can use it for traveling purposes and mm. visa purposes. You know? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like if I would be young again, and I wouldn't necessarily think that I. I mean, if I wanted to stay in Romania, I would, uh, with what I know right now, I wouldn't need a degree to get a job in art, because mm. like I'm already there. I don't need a visa or anything. But a degree is super helpful when you need to fight for a visa or something like that, mm. you know. Because if you're educated, they're gonna accept you easier, you know. Mm -hmm. mm. But that, that that being said, is that degree won't be requested from you ever in this yeah. art industry. It's like, no one asked me for my diploma. Yeah, it's kind of more it's like, like, hey, if you don't have a diploma, get that back out of here. Like, hey, we won't hire you. Like, no. It's <laughs> like, my diploma is my portfolio, basically. Yeah. It's not like I'm operating on someone. Like, Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of funny how that works. Yeah. It's like, Which is uh, cool. Like, uh, I'm, I'm super grateful for living in a time where I can basically do a 180 switch at 20 years old and pursue this and yeah yeah do you ever think you're going to make another 180 switch who knows who knows <laughs> i was ready to make it like a That's... few years ago when i started learning 3d I, I think i was like kind of i started because i was bored of drawing so mm. and yeah, eventually it, it pulled me back in. And then again, I discovered photography, which I really like. So it's like, it seems like the universe wants me to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wants you to do something artistic. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's, that's How really about cooking? <laughs> well, I was <laughs> thinking of cooking because like cooking is a very good skill to have to oh, yeah. meet new people. I mean, I would love to cook for people, but I only cooked a few times and I'm very bad at it. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I re actually hated the food. So I, I don't feel like spending money on ingredients that I'm going to throw away, you know. Mm -hmm. So this really rough sketch that you've done underneath. It, yeah. 
you kind of know what you sketched out, right? Yeah, I that's what really... I'm saying. Is like now I can get away with this kind of sketch with, with a client that trusts me. Because mm -hmm. okay. they know like fix it somehow. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm, they I'm don't sure know if they have sure, it. But... <laughs> well, this is a pretty rough sketch. You can, you you've sent sketches that that are like that rough. Yeah. Wow. But it depends on what, uh, like, for a character, maybe it has to be a bit cleaner. But mm -hmm. for props and stuff like that, that it's kind of secondary. If it's yeah. gonna be a hero prop again, like I would spend a bit more time. Oh yeah. Before I send, and also it depends how much time I have. Cause like at work, I, I roughly have three days for a task, so including the sketches. So. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this is the like in this stage of the drawing, it's like I'm kind of like the most scared. <laughs> yeah. Because like I know that I have to solve all those problems. So you see, I, even though I kind of moved on and worked a bit on the gun, I'm still going back to the area of comfort. Like, oh, this area is kind of done, but I'm still like erasing things, putting putting them back. Not, nothing big changing. It's basically that's fear of moving on to the next stage of. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's funny because it's like you do a sketch and you've just created a hundred different problems that you need to solve. Exactly. And but then there gets yeah. to like a tipping point where you're like, okay, now I'm now I'm comfortable with it. And then you have the risk of being bored. You're like, okay, I already solved the problems, now I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's a battle. Yeah. <laughs> a battle between boredom and stress let's see how much i work on this handle so because <laughs> i'm curious how what is my attention span before i go back to the, the helmet again yeah yeah it would be funny if i just like go back again right now yeah and also flipping see yeah I, i'm almost huh <laughs> so you still okay. really enjoy line work uh yeah it's fun um, I hate drawing ellipses though, even though there are tools to make them like easier. Well, your ellipses aren't too bad. Like they're pretty good. Well, they can be better, and through better, I mean, I want them to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a, a client's gonna know that that's an ellipse. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, like uh, for a design like this, I would rather do it in three D, because mm. then they like. Uh, with a client, it's, this is not final for them. Like they want the blueprint after this. Yeah. And my brain hurts when I do blueprints. You no, mean like... man. The uh, what do you call orthographies? Yeah, ortho orthographic. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, stuff. I I I do that a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I would draw something in a digital painting or whatever song. Like okay, at least in their eyes, it's awesome, right? And they go like, okay, man, now we need to give it to the 3D guys. I'm like, oh, what? And they go, oh, you need to give us an orthography, man. And well, I usually charge an hour if I'm doing freelance. So I just go, okay, man, it's probably going to take me a couple of hours. And yeah. and I'll just do, if it's a really big one, it's probably, it goes, it couldn't go up to 12 hours if, you know. And then yeah. I make a huge grid and start doing orthographies. Man, I hate orthographies. <laughs> That's well, why, like, sometimes I get I scared. I haven't found like, anyone who likes them so far. So. <laughs> like, what if I, like, some, that's why I get scared sometimes, you know. Sometimes I do, like, a design and I go, like, holy shit, okay. I don't want to draw something that I might put myself in a trap, right? <laughs> but then I go, but then they definitely ask, oh, I like that version better. I'm like, damn it. Okay, fine. Yeah. Just keep it cool. Solve it for them. It's a job. They always that's pick it. your least favorite one. Oh, dude, they always go for the least favorite one, I swear. <laughs> Do you know what's worse, man? Okay, you want to kind of pretend or at least show that you're giving effort, right? So you at least give them five to ten versions, right? And as a person, you look at maybe three of them going, okay, man, I really want to do these one of these three. These ones are the greats. So I'll put it in the top or whatever, you know. The first thing they will see is my best version. They, they go, the bottom left one. No, we, I, we like this. And I go, well, but I think with the armor or whatever, this one's cool. They go, no, 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 it's okay. I, you already, like, made it cool. Do that one. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And that usually ends up being something I would not post on. A, but you know, have you ever submitted 
let's say three thumbnails that you were always like ha happy at the same level with all of them because that never happens either like <laughs> in that case you you would be bummed out that you cannot render all three of them you know? <laughs> but yeah like mo we artists are also like uh, little bitches you know we do one that we like and then we do quickly two rough ones that are open up for possibilities you know and probably that's why they pick the 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 shittiest one because the like the client maybe see like oh see something else that has a different possibility that you saw you know i don't know hmm. how to explain it so <laughs> maybe uh, our laziness 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 makes us do that you know it's like the, yeah like the one you rendered better doesn't usually get kind of picked up but the one you kind of implied gets picked up and now you're like okay what was i implying in the first place anyway yeah. and then you like then you flesh it out detail the hell out of it send it back they go no it wasn't what i asked i'm like but look top to top 50 percent opacity is what you asked like right here but they go no 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 your sketch was better what happened to it i'm like but yeah, it's, it's a swath pretty... of paint there's no detail in it right yeah and that ha that that did happen to me a few times so I, yeah. yeah it's still a it depends on the client, but you know, it's just when it happens, I get bummed out. Like, oh, like I, I like I tried to show a little effort, but then I put myself in this trap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we need to do an art quest episode where every where everybody who's who's joining is in VR chat, and we go and meet up as as like anime cat girls. <laughs> That'd be yeah, funny. that's the dream, man. We live in the future. <laughs> The, the future is here. It is now. Man, VR chat is way too addicting. Like, I'm never going to open it again because I'm just going to sit in it for 12 hours. With VR chat, you can talk to anyone and you <laughs> feel like you're right next to them, you know? Uh, Even though they have a cute little bunny face or. Right? Oh, sorry. One second. I That's think it's nice church. Fell. Fell. church. The British well, are coming. You guys are going to hear the bells for a while now. No worries. So, um, I think that's pretty much everything we had planned. Yeah. yeah. Like, we burned through our problems. We burned through uh, everything. Our bandwidth. Yeah. So, I guess if... Um, Maybe you can put your put your cam your your webcam back on, and we can say thanks for coming, everybody. And mm. oh, there's me. There's and there's Boren. Stop. Okay, I should be visible now, right? Uh, or not? I think it's waiting for you to become visible. Oh, I have to allow. Yeah, there we go. Oh, even the sunlight changed that your area. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been live for two and a half hours or something is crazy so yeah. thank you for for giving us this time on your precious sundays yeah <laughs> well mm. no worries i'm happy to be here yeah and i really had fun sweet and now i'm gonna go bike a bit before oh. the day is over i'm gonna yes. do a bike ride maybe take some photos outside because it's like it's it's so rare that we get sun here in quebec yeah most of the time it's cold and windy and rainy. Mm -hmm. Is your uh, skin getting paler each day? Well, I'm a Romanian, so I come from the land of Dracula. So <laughs> oh, I see. Pale, so. <laughs> Dude, when you smile, we can all we can see the fangs, man. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I went to the dentist and they told me that my gums are receding, so I need to cut skin from the top of my mouth palace i think it's called and they put it over the gums or something like that it's like what the that's fuck? weird okay mm. yeah mm. so I'm, I'm getting even longer teeth right now <laughs> <clears throat> yeah we just got up to 10 10 viewers again i think someone might have shared the link <laughs> but um so yeah i uh we're this is gonna be up on youtube everybody who's watching this right now this will be on youtube after words in, in, uh, in a couple two, hours. hours once it finishes processing by tomorrow for sure yeah two okay. uh, let me know and i'll share it too uh sweet yeah, yeah that would be awesome we're, cool, we're trying man. to 
we're trying to grow our and dude uh, we really appreciate that you took your time to prepare videos for us that's yeah that's oh, really, that's, that's, that's really appreciated thank you. for this, this occasion the other ones they recorded <laughs> from a long mm -hmm. time yeah anything's anything's awesome like we appreciate any any bit um and and everybody appreciates it too like um <laughs> Elliot says, nice bike. Hope you get a solid ride in before third winter starts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, Elliot's, I think, I think Elliot's a big fan of, of your, of your work. Cool, um, man. Thanks. Yeah. All right. A, well, so, um, it's very nice to be here. Yeah, definitely. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just, you know, keep in touch with you and everything. And after I do some more work, maybe you invite me again. Oh yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, we want to get a we want to get a bunch of. We could uh, we could try on. multiple guests at one point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and make them fight. <laughs> yeah. The you have twenty minutes. Go. Competition. And then, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whoever loses the art battle has to delete his art station and his social medias. <laughs> People will watch that. Yeah, that's Imagine funny. Kim Jun Ji and uh, I don't know what's another big artist. Sekimi Chan. The loser has to never draw again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Well, that is it. Uh, I know a bunch of this information is kind of already up online on different channels, and everybody always kind of says the same thing. But it's it's nice because just re reiterating it, I guess, and making people understand that you know it's not a magical career. It's practice and hard work and you're going to make it if you put in the work so uh, all right thanks for joining us and i will uh you can you can stay in the uh oops uh stream labs there uh all right anybody anyways uh thanks for coming and we will see you next sunday thank you bye. all right bye bye have a great week ahead